On your special event, let's send out the EU season in Italian style. That's Tarapagos and Raging Bolt joining the field over for Matteo. Me and Xiao and Chi Yu coming out for Lorenzo. Yeah, interesting lead choice here with the Chi Yu and the Mian Xiao. Of course, you pressure the Tarapagos quite a bit right away. You have the option to, to go for a Snarl potentially. Um, to yeah, reduce the special attack right away. And then Mian Shao, uh, one of the worst things with Terrapagos is being uh, faked out because it means that the Terra Shell, of course, breaks. And Terra Shell in the regular Terrapagos form before terrestrialization, of course, um, reducing any damage, turning it into a not super effective move. So uh, that is something that I'm pretty sure Matteo would want to keep around for a bit. Yeah, well, it's fake out going into the Raging Bolt. Instead, Asnal comes out in order to break that Terra Shell and reduce the special attack of both of the Pokemon on the opponent side of the field. Nice way to get around the Terra Shell ability of Terrapagos there. As the offensive output is depleted, single target Terra Star Storm coming out into the Mian Xiao. The Focus Sash is broken down to just 15 HP. Of course, a very frail Pokemon indeed, that Mian Xiao. Yeah, you really want to deal with that Mian Xiao if you're Mateo here because um, of how much is this threatening that Terrapagos with the close combat. Um, I think Lorenzo will like the outcome of that turn still because, yeah, you got off that Snarl, but at what cost, right? Mm. Um, Snarl, not a move that is known for doing a ton of damage. Um, and then, yeah, Mian Xiao now uh, can only maybe be around for one more turn. It doesn't have Protect. So if there is a Thunderclap coming out from that Raging Bolt um, on Mateo's side, yes, Lorenzo really has to keep that Pokemon around for later. You've also got to be careful because if this Terrapagos goes for a Protect here, then its leftovers will get it back up to full HP, restoring the Terra Shell, enabling it to distort tight matchups once again. So go on and want to be capitalizing as this Terrapagos has its health to bleed. But there it is, that's a Protect coming out in order to restore that very shell. And here comes another Snarl. So this Raging Bolt will be doing significantly less Less damage now, yep. taking it much better than it would have done thanks to the Assault Vest as well, although already nearly down to half HP. It's going to be Raging Bolt playing <laughs> to you at its own game, going for a Snarl there. Rillaboom really not going to mind about that special attack drop being a physical attacker, but Chiyu certainly will back up to full HP there, as is the Terrapagos. Yeah, nice play there, I would say, by both sides. Uh, Lorenzo uh, identifying that Mian Shao is very important or could become very, very important later down the road with that wide guard. Um, and then Matteo, on the other hand, saying, yeah, you probably want to switch out that Mian Shao because you're expecting a Thunderclap. So maybe you will bring in your Calyrex Shadow Rider. So with that Snarl, kind of, um, yeah, making sure that that cannot happen here. Right, and here comes the Terra Shell being broken once again and Snarl coming for the Raging Bolt and the Terrapagos. The Geo isn't locked into that move. It's holding the Covert Cloak, yep. but clearly the move of choice <laughs> in order just to mitigate as much as possible the special offensive output. And the Terra Star Storm, just look how much yeah. or how little damage that really was taking as a result, especially holding the Assault Vest wow. as the Wood Hammer brings that Trapagos down really, really low. No more leftovers recovery is going to restore Ooh. that Terra Shell so easily. And Draco Meteor is going to be dodging the Rillaboom there. Yeah, I mean, I think with the um, with the Assault Vest that Rillaboom is holding on Lorenzo's side, uh, probably had enough oh, yeah. special defense to withstand that Draco Meteor, even next to that Beats of Ruin coming out yeah. from the Chiyu. But then we also have the reduced special attack. So, uh, yeah. Interesting with the Chiyu, of course, because it's kind of it's lowering the special defense of your partner Pokemon, but then also lowering the special attack. So it gets it can get a little bit complicated, but I'm pretty sure Lorenzo definitely has experience um, with with this interaction. So um, I don't see any reason why the Chiyu shouldn't just keep going for more snarls because yeah, <laughs> two special attackers over on Mateo's side, and uh, it looks like Mateo really doesn't want to switch them out as of yet. I mean, there is some healing involved with the with the leftovers, with the grassy terrain, and yeah, Chiyu not doing that much damage so so yeah i can blame mateo just saying like hey okay you can snarl me a little bit more but like yeah. i'm also slowly whittling down your hp yeah we're taking a dip in the aquarium still on the left side of the field with that fish and that turtle raging bolt is having a miserable day at the office right now as Woodhammer, it's not going to be very effective it's not going to be enough for the knockout but frankly mateo really has very limited use that they can get out of this raging bolt oh, right now no. save a switch and oh. another dodge from draco <laughs> meteor into the rillaboom but with all of those special attack drops and the Assault Vest and the recovery on the field. You know what? I doubt that the Draco Meteor still would have been able to take out that Rillaboom, even if it had yeah. connected twice. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe maybe twice uh, might have been close, but yeah, definitely that Rillaboom um, could have taken one of those, but I, I can always, I can already like see Mateo. He's probably thinking, okay, Raging Bolt has done his <laughs> job. 
Um, I, I, it doesn't really, it's not really worth it to switch it out. So um, I just yeah, go for one last attempt, go for the Draco Meteor, and then it misses. And he's like, okay, well, uh, good, <laughs> good, good, no problem. I have another chance. He goes for it again, and once again it misses. But yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's just how it goes sometimes. Um, and once again, not too impactful, I think, for this stage of the battle. Uh, as once again, both trainers really just staring down each other, and it looks like a Trestalization is happening here. Yeah, it's time to get sparkly for one of these Pokemon, and it will be the Terrapagos going for its namesake, that Terra Stella. That's going to be boosting for one time any of the other types of moves available. But of course, Mateus Terrapagos only has that Terra Star Storm as an option. Terraform Zero going to be removing the grassy terrain from the field. Heat Wave coming out instead of that Snarl. Not enough to pick up the knockout on either Pokemon oh. here and getting the burn on the Raging Bolt. Oh my goodness, this Raging Bolt just needs to have a little nap, I think. Get over the terrible, terrible misfortune it's been experiencing. Here comes a double target Terra Star Storm now that the Terrapagos has to rastalize. Is it going to be enough to pick up the knockout? Oh, goodness. Nah. That might be the weakest, most feeble yep. Terra Star Storm I've seen as Woodhammer is now able to secure the knockout. So that is the restricted down for Mateo. And this turtle is well and truly retreating back into its shell. Yeah, usually I think with this matchup, well, first of all, let's see uh, what that Raging Bolt is going for. Maybe is it now a Draco, Draco Meteor? There we go. It can, oh, the Rhythm uh, <laughs> still hangs on. That's just insult uh, to injury there. Yeah, let's see with that burn if Raging Bolt will make it. No, it does. Just, just barely. <laughs> so now Raging Bolt is at what? Minus, I don't know, five, four-ish, I think. Yeah it's, uh, yeah, it's not very powerful. Um, but uh, yeah, usually in this matchup, right? So on paper, it looks like Calyrex Shadow Rider, uh, mainly using ghost type attacks, of course, should have a bad matchup into the Terrapagos. But if you've taken notice what Lorenzo has been doing here, he has not used the restricted Pokemon yet. It's yeah, presumably yeah. still waiting in the back for him. But um, instead, he's really just going with the support cast, putting pressure on that Terrapagos, knowing exactly what he needs to do, lower the damage output, and then put Masteo in a position where he felt forced to go for that terrestrialization yeah. to remove the grassy terrain potentially. But even with that, that was the turn when, when Lorenzo then um, went on the offensive, said, okay, it's enough with the snarts for now. I will go for the Heat Wave, and then that combination, Heat Wave, Woodhammer, knocking out the Terrapagos. So a really, really important turn here, getting that um, Pokemon down for Lorenzo. I wonder, too, whether Mateo deliberately terrestrialized there to remove the grassy terrain so that the Urshu is safer from a grassy glide that could have been coming out from the Rillaboom there. Surging Strike is going to be easily enough to pick up the knockout onto the Mian Shao here. Wow, and look at that. Um, Lorenzo just, um, yeah, with that Chiyu, um, looking down against that Urshifu, he's saying like, hey, you know what? I don't think you're going to target the Chiyu. I yeah, still exactly, have Terrestrialization yeah. as an option on my side. I could just go and terrestrialize, and terrestrialize into the water type. Of course, not that great against the Raging Bolt, um, but that was going to be knocked out after the turn anyway. So instead, just going for a straight Heat Wave, knock out the Raging Bolt, and um, yeah, now with the confirmation of Mateo's Urshifu being locked into Surging Strike, um, and no more option for him to switch out. It looks like Lorenzo uh, might have, uh, with a 3v2 advantage, now can think about, okay, how can I maneuver um, this end game? I gotta say that, Marcus, where there's a scream tail, there could be a way going for those encores and disables. Yep. It's time for Lorenzo to reveal the restricted in the back. There is that Calyrex Shadow Rider. It's of course gonna be the speed being boosted over on the scream tail, so it can go for those disruptive moves even more quickly. And now it's the mind games of, is the Urshvu gonna be targeting into the Chiyu mm. this turn? Do I terrestrialize uh, uh, into that water type up Lorenzo's sleeve here? Yep. Let's hope that this Calyrex has enough gas in the tank. Of course, that Rillaboom in the back is on such low HP that the margins are actually closer than they might first appear. Yeah, so um, but what Matteo has going for him is he should have the speed advantage, both the screen tail with the speed boost and also the Urshifu with a Choice Scarf, yeah. likely outspeeding everything. And it's a play rough. That's not something we wow. see very often. You're coming out from the Squeak Child and the Surging Ooh. Strike follow up. But if I'm not wrong, there's a Citrus Berry is, waiting yeah. for Lorenzo. So it looks like Calyrex Shadow Rider will just barely be able to make it through the turn. Yes, yeah, certainly will. Even without the Citrus Berry, it could have been close or might have just secured the knockout there. But yeah, the Calyrex surviving on half HP, I guess that gives it more switch inability yep. when you're holding that Citrus Berry. So nice tech there. Astral Barrage going to be super effective into the screen tail at least. Let's see how much you can achieve. Wow. Oh my goodness, wow. Just goes to show that you don't necessarily need to boost up your Calyrex. You can still run that Citrus Berry too yep. and dish out massive damage. And this is the problem with the Calyrex. <laughs> if you let it get one knockout, then it's gonna be getting all of them with that boost to its attack. As the heat wave comes out, a little bit of a taste of uh, Raging Bolso medicine there <laughs> with the screen tail dodging. 
Yeah, very um, cool set here from Lorenzo with the Citrus Berry, and I, I believe it's still running a little bit of, of bulk, so the, the Calyrex being trained a little bit more defensively, but when paired next with the Chiyu and the Beats of Ruin, of course, yeah, that's that's uh, the old Fluttermain Chiyu combination. Take a hit, and that way you're not mitigating the damage coming out from your side of the field, but it's going to be the same lead, in fact, for Mateo, with Trapagos and the Raging Bell, perhaps predicting a switch up over on Lorenzo's end, but instead Lorenzo does go for the same as well, with Chiyu and me and Chow. Yeah, Lorenzo doesn't really have any reason to, to switch things up. Um, I think that's a common theme that we've, we're, we're seeing um, in competitive play is if something worked just so well in the first game, like, yeah, you could you could be like, oh, what if they do this? What if I switch things up, right? But hey, maybe you just need your opponent to, to show you what they've got, right? Like, okay, I've shown you my Chiyu and Mian Chao plan, but what can you even do against that? And it looked like in the first game, Lorenzo was so satisfied with how that worked um, that he's going to do that again for the second game. Not entirely the same as the Mian Shower switching out on the very first turn this time, enabling Rillaboom to join the field. And perhaps Mateo is lulling Lorenzo into a false sense of security, making a switch up of their own as the grass springs up over the battlefield. But no, just going to be a snarl, and that's going to be breaking that Terra Shell once more and mitigating the special offensive output from both of these Pokemon. Yeah, I think this might already be a little bit of a better outcome here for Mateo. No protects um, from their side, so just a Terra Star Storm and potentially um, a Draco Meteor followed up by that Raging Bolt, and that, oh, okay, it's, okay. A, it's a Thunderbolt, <laughs> uh, but still, that should do a little bit of chip here yeah, to the yeah, Rillaboom. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, don't don't get me wrong, if Mateo can set up that Terrapagos and can get a couple of Call Mines under its belt, it will be so difficult for Lorenzo to knock it out. So Lorenzo needs to be on his toes every turn. He needs to make sure that there is no free turn for that Terrapagos that doesn't get up a substitute. Um, of course, Snarl would bypass the substitute, but um, yeah, it, it doesn't do that much damage. And between leftovers and grassy terrain, there's a lot of recovery potential for the Terrapagos. So yeah, Lorenzo, even though the first game looked pretty convincing, has to be very, very careful um, in how to counterplay against the Terrapagos. Absolutely. Snarl being a sound-based move, as you say, Marcus, we'll be going through any substitute that Terrapagos could set up here. And that grassy terrain being set up on the field is just going to enable it to restore its Terra Shell immediately as opposed to having to go for a Protect on the next turn. So that's also a mind game that Lorenzo has to dance around right now. Terrapagos is going to be retreating to the back. It's going to be undoing yep. that special attack drop that it received in order for Incineroar to yep. come in, dropping the offensive output from the Rillaboom and a little bit of a switch up from Mateo's side. Incineroar not brought to that first game. Snarl coming out once more, at least the Raging Bolt will be taking a special attack drop there. The cat is staring down the fish, but Chiyu isn't feeling too frightened right now as Woodhammer is connecting down. So a really nice switch there from Mateo. Yeah, absolutely. I really like that adjustment, bringing here in the Incineroar, also lowering the attack on the Rillaboom, which will have to take a Draco Meteor here, but yeah, with the Assault Vest um, and the Snarl that we saw earlier, can take that quite well. But um, yeah, usually, of course, Incineroar is another Pokemon that doesn't really like facing that Mian Shao. So now I'm yeah. um, yeah, getting like a little bit worried for Mateo here based on the three Pokemon that we've seen so far. There's no clear path through the Mian Shao yet, but this particular situation that the Incineroar finds on the board right now against Chiyu and Rillaboom, that's that's perfectly fine to, to bring in the Incineroar. And this is exactly the situation that Mateo was looking for when he decided to bring the Incineroar to this game. Yeah, you've got to say that Mian Chao is incredibly frail. So even though it's not taking super effective damage from anything on Mateo's side, super effective doesn't necessarily matter when you're most likely knocking it out in two hits anyway. But with the grassy train, of course, that's going to be recovering the Mian Chao too. So yes, Lorenzo does have to dance around a little bit more, dance to the beat of Rillaboom's drum right now yep. in order to try and claim that upper hand. Snarl coming out once more. Chiyu doing what it did so well for Lorenzo in game one. Yeah, no fake out from that Incineroar, but I think it makes a lot of sense to maybe go for a parting shot here. Uh, because you don't want that Mian Shao to hit the field uncontestedly. Um, so U-turn coming out first, though, from Lorenzo. Now, we'll probably have to bring in the Mian Shao because you don't want to risk maybe being hit by, um, I don't know, like a, a, a knockoff in that slot from the Incineroar. That would be worst oh. case. But even Ooh. that Draco Meteor are doing quite a decent amount of chip even with all those special attack drops um, and the parting shot lowering <laughs> Mian Shao's attack stat. Yeah, drops all around. Of course, Raging Bolt, as well as taking those snarls, is going to take a recall to its special attack every time it goes for Draco Meteor. So Mian Shao is actually kept relatively safe. Not often that you get to see a Mian Shao switching in so much for free, but that is certainly the position that it's in right now. And also, not very often that you see the Mian Shao getting a lowered attack stat because, of course, with the inner focus ability, usually that's one um, ability that is immune to the effects of 
love Intimidate, um, but now with Parting Shot, um, yeah, Mian Shou a little bit weaker, and that is the final Pokemon here from Mateo's side, is the Urshifu with a Choice Scarf. Now, once again, that's a nice Pokemon to bring into this situation because of how threatening Surging Strikes will be on either Pokemon on Lorenzo's side, but the one thing Lorenzo has in this particular situation is Fake Out is active. So, he has the time, potentially, to go for a Fake Out, maybe reposition just a little bit. Uh, Raging Bolt is quite weak. Might be an opportunity, actually, for Mateo to swap out that Pokemon. Yeah, potentially, if you're going to want to be charging up that Raging Bolt once more in the back. Rillaboom coming in, and there it is, the Raging Bolt being switched out as well. So joining the field for Mateo is going to be that Incineroar once more. All four Pokemon revealed for Mateo now, and in the face of these now two physical attackers over on Lorenzo's side, it's going to be paying dividends, but thanks to the inner focus, Intimidate not going to be achieving anything onto the Mian Shao, as Urshfu is going to be buying Rillaboom a turn to come in for free. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense uh, here, a very, let's say, neutral turn, not a lot of damage uh, being dealt, but both players swapping in their Pokemon that have Fake Out. Yeah. But once again, Inner Focus, uh, it looks like one of those abilities is it just does so well into Incineroar, blocks Intimidate and also blocks the Fake Out. Now, once again, Lorenzo has the Fake Out pressure this turn, could go for a Fake Out with Rillaboom onto the opposing Urshifu to prevent it from moving once more, and then Mian Shao could go for a close combat or just reposition once again um, to maybe bring in another Pokemon. But of course, Mateo also knows this um, and might have some plans on his own to prevent this from happening. This is absolutely huge. As Terrapagos comes in and Mian Shao being a fighting type, this could get quite dicey. Urshfu is going to be faked out once more. It's not being able to act on the field even yet. Close combat, at least the Terra Shell is still active. Yeah, it's not going to be taking very effective damage, so it is a safer switch here. And look at that. That's that's just how useful Terra Shell can be. Yeah, Terra Shell, of course, being, I would say, just a little bit, uh, or like one of the very, very strong abilities um, that, that is available here in a restricted format. Um, at, at first glance, I was like, oh, this is just like multi-scale, right? Like on a, on yeah. a Dragonite, like it's, it's very similar, but no, uh, not only does it half the damage, it turns the move into a not very effective move. So here we're seeing close combat, usually a super effective move, now turning into a not very effective move, um, of course, now, meaning that the Terrapagos takes much, much less damage than it would have otherwise. Yeah, one more close combat after that Terrapagos, Terra Shell have been broken, and you will see just how much damage that it's the damage difference that would be done to that Pokemon. But Mateo isn't going to let that happen easily. You've got to protect your pieces in this game of chess. Now, the Grassy Trainer has disappeared, but Terrapagos holding the leftovers, still going to be able to get back to full HP relatively easily with that Terrapagos yep. and restore that Terra Shell once more. Mateo playing this game so much, so much, really, really well compared yes. to that game one, really giving Lorenzo a much harder time of it. Yeah, and of course there's the feint on the Mian Shao, so uh, that would be one way to break through a potential protect, but he doesn't really have any follow-up right now. The Rillaboom outside of grassy terrain doesn't do a ton of damage. Um, I believe it's also been intimidated the, the previous turn, so um, yeah, Lorenzo really has to think about how to get out of the situation, because now, if that Urshifu uh, gets off a couple of searching strikes, uh, things could go badly very, very well for Lorenzo. Absolutely. Of course, you've got the Rillaboom there to provide support, but it's time for Terrapagos to Terrasalize. It's feeling on top of the world right now, being in a much better position than it was in Game 1. There's close combat into the Rillaboom. That's enough for the knockout. So that is something that is going to pave the way for this Urshifu to do even better in the future turns of this game. So the drummer's off the field, and what is this Terrapagos going to be going for? It's now going to be single target into the Chiyu. Terra Star Storm raining down from the skies. It's going to be not quite enough to pick up the knockout onto the Chiyu there. It's going to be surviving on about 50% HP. Of course, the Beads of Ruin reducing the special defense of everything around it, but not the Chiyu itself. Yeah, Chiyu um, with this particular build with a covered cloak looks like it's um, yeah trying to be a little bit more bulky, more defensively um, than some of the other Chiyus that we're used to seeing. Um, but now, this is the perfect time for Calyrex to hit the field for Lorenzo. We've now seen Urshifu on Mateo's side is being choice-locked into the close combat. Now, there was an opportunity for Mateo to maybe potentially go off for that surging strikes, but instead he said, okay, I really want to get rid of this Rillaboom right now when I have the chance, um, at the cost of potentially having to switch out Urshifu now um, to, to be able to, to change its move uh, later on, because, yeah, you, you can't hit the ghost type. 
with a close combat. No, you absolutely can't. And Ghost can't hit the normal type either with their Ghost type move. So the Calyrex finds itself in an interesting position here. You do have access to something like a Draining Kiss, and it's worth bearing in mind as well that this Terrapagos isn't as offensive immediately as it possibly can be because it is running the Calm Mind move in order to boost up those stats. So you might see a Choice Specs Terrapagos, for example, doing much more damage to the opposing side of the field. Huh. Raging Bell is going to crane its long neck down onto the field, and it's time for Lorenzo to go for their own terrestrialization. And this time, it's going to be the Calyrex. It's going to be showing its love for its partner on the field right now, and it's wow. potentially boosting up its draining kiss move too. Yeah, that's a very risky move, because if you are taking a Terra Star Storm, that will be, um, re in return, this will be super effective. Of course, it's nice to hit the Raging mm. Bolt here on the switch, but I think that Lorenzo was predicting the Urshifu to potentially stay in and go for a close combat into Chiyu. This did not happen, and now Terrapagos has a great chance to get off one super effective Terra Star Storm. Super effective, but at minus one special attack, and it's a spread type move now. How much is it going to be doing? The Calyrex takes that really quite well, and it enables it to have its Citrus Berry right now. A bit of a sigh of relief coming out from Lorenzo there. As this Chiyu is still on the field, it's still perfectly happy, just floating around its tank there. And of course, Terrapagos having received that little boost to its HP bar, thanks to Terrestrializing. Yeah, now might be finally the chance in this best of three for the Terrapagos to go ahead and set up a Calm Mind. I'm actually a little bit surprised that we see the Raging Ball join the field. I thought that it might have been a good opportunity to bring in the Incineroar, not just for the Intimidate, but just because it, it could take any um, attack thrown at it quite well. But maybe Mateo is saying he values the HP on the Incineroar a little bit higher, knowing that, um, yeah, in the back there still could be that Mian Shao, so potentially you might want to be a little bit more healthy on that Incineroar. Um, but yeah, Raging Bolt already being quite damaged. Um, could maybe get off one final uh, Thunderclap here in this situation, but I think yeah, Terrapagos, if it wanted to, it could go for a Calm Mind right here because it's not really um, under too much uh, pressure. Well, Chi Yu certainly was. That Thunderclap is going to be electrifying that fish, and it's down and out from the field. Draining Kiss will be coming out, enabling Calyrex to recover a little bit of HP into mm. Terrapagos, but really the emphasis on just a little bit there. Yeah. Terrapagos taking that really, really well. Well, very defensive turtle shell Pokemon there. Here comes another Terra Star Storm. This time it's going to be single target. It is at one stage of reduced special attack right now. Firing down into the Calyrex, and it's got about a third of its HP remaining. As long as Draining Kiss is active, though, it can be recovering, and it's certainly more into the Raging Bolt. Being a Dragon type, taking super effective damage, but of course the Raging Bolt is on such low HP. Yeah, and Lorenzo down to their last two Pokemon. But if if there's a combination of Pokemon to do it, it might be Calyrex yeah. and Mian Shao. However, yeah, that Choice Scarf Mateo ha still has in the back on that Urshifu. Uh, that will be, I think, um, the, the key piece that Mateo now has to think about. Um, of course, you don't want the Calyrex to get too much recovery um, with those draining kisses, so you, you have to go for, for or you want to set, set this endgame up in a way where Urshifu can hit the field um, uncontestedly in a situation where the Calyrex um, doesn't have a lot of HP left. So um, as long as you can keep the Calyrex in check, um, I think L uh, Mateo here being up for the two um, should be in a decent spot. Interesting to see Mateo protecting the Terrapagos here. Could be attempting to get this done, but of course, when there's the threat of the wide guard, the Terrapagos cannot be dealing any damage to Lorenzo's side of the field because now it's terrestrialized. Uh, the Terra Star Storm is always going to be a spread type move, and wide guard will protect that as mm. a nasty plot is going to come out from the Calyrex, and it's able to set that up for free. Thunderbolt, not enough to pick up the knockout on the Mianchao, but it does get the paralysis there, which could be blocking any wide guards that could be coming out in the future, rendering it unable to move. And it's nice to see the nasty plot coming out, not only because Lorenzo slightly has their back against the wall, but because Thunderclap had been targeting into the Calyrex, would not be doing anything there with Nasty Plot not being a damaging move. Yeah, I think with, with Draining Kiss, now would be the chance um, to, to recover a lot of HP, but for this, Lorenzo would need this Draining Kiss to knock out the Terrapagos, because if there's a Terra Star Star coming out, uh, predicting that there's no White Guard from the Mian Shao, then this could be the end of the game. Draining is not quite enough, so what did the Terrapagos go for? If it would try to go for a substitute, that could be a swing in Lorenzo's favor. Oh, oh it's actually the Calm Mind. Okay, so not game over yet, um, but uh, yeah, also Mateo still definitely in this. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you definitely in this draining kiss is only gonna be the is gonna be the only move that uh, is gonna be threatening damage into Mateo Terrapagos being a normal type Pokemon there, and uh, with the Calm Mind being set up, playing Calyrex at his own game, just in trying to secure this victory for Mateo, all mm. four Pokemon remaining, of course there.
Yeah, and there's still also the Incineroar, so yeah. uh, Lorenzo doesn't want to take two knockouts at the same time, I think, because then, um, yeah, Incineroar and Urshifu could hit the field on the same time, and you can go for, for like, a fake out into the Calyrex. Um, oh, oh, dear. Uh, that's, that's unfortunate for Lorenzo, who attempted, I believe, to go for a feint here on that Raging Bolt, but the Draining Kiss will go out. No protect ah. from the other side, and not quite enough for the knockout. Uh, and that that could be curtains now if there is that Terra Star Storm. Yeah, it is going to be the Terra Star Storm, and with this Cali where it's being a fairy type, taking neutral damage from that. Of course, it is going to be hitting ghost types as well. A quirk of this particular move. But me and Chow is now down. The Cali Rex is brought down low. It's nice to be able to go for the feint on the raging bolts or on the me and Chow as well, because yep. of course thunderclaps aren't going to be doing anything. Feint going at first, but Cali Rex able to take that thunderbolt there. It's on 12 HP, but the result is very much in Mateo's favor and therefore the state of the game. Lorenzo recognizing that and it looks like we're going to a game three. Uh, that's what we love to see, but I, I think in that in that game it might have been what Mateo was doing. Absolutely. Is that going to be what's coming out in the leads? Well, it's going to be Raging Bolt and Terrapagos for Mateo once more. And this time it's Clefairy and Chiyu for Lorenzo. Oh, Clefairy, um, of course, supporting the Chiyu quite a bit with a friend guard ability, which will mean that it will take even less damage from any attacks coming out. Um, and then, of course, Snarl can help to mitigate the damage even further. <laughs> but the Clefairy, not really known for any offensive pressure. Um, and we've seen it there on the screen. The Sing, of course, uh, one of the most, uh, I don't know, dreadful attacks. 55% <laughs> accurate. So uh, barely, it's a, it's a coin flip. Yeah, it really is a coin flip as to whether one of Mateo's Pokemon is going to be taking a snooze on this turn with Raging Bolt really needing to crane its neck down to see that tiny Clefairy on the field. And the Terra Shell once more going to be broken by the Snarl. Turn one playing out of this GU exactly as it has in the previous couple of games. Lorenzo recognizing that Snarl is so crucial for this particular matchup. Terrapagos going for the single target Terra Star Storm, trying to remove that Chiyu from the field as fast as possible, but just look at the dividends that the Snarl was paying there. Thunderbolt coming out into the Chiyu, and once more Chiyu barely tickling, just brought down ah. to half his health. But yes, that Sing is going to be dodged by the Raging Bolt, but you click that button enough, and one of those Sings is going to be swinging the ears of that Raging Bolt. Yeah, Clefairy is really, I think, uh, Lorenzo saying, hey, I expect this Raging Bolt to be in the lead once again, because and there is not, there's not much Raging Bolt can do against the Clefairy, really. It can, of course, try to go for, for some Thunderbolts, but then you have the Snarl um, lowering the damage output. And then being a Salt Vest, Raging Bolt doesn't have Protect, so uh, Sing is a very, very, uh, well, quote-unquote safe move. I mean, you're only hitting <laughs> about half the time, but let's let's have a look at this. Even the double target Oh, there doesn't we get go! It. It's time for Raging Bolt to be sung by a lullaby as it's going to take that rest up there with its head well and truly in the clouds, dreaming away. As Terrapagos gets a little bit of leftovers recovery there, you flip that coin twice and it did land once. That's more or less what we'd expect from a 55% yep. accurate move. And now this is a really good opportunity for Lorenzo's restricted Pokemon to get steamrolling. That's yep. certainly what Calyrex can do with its spooky Grimnay ability. Yeah, absolutely. So Lorenzo now really needs to make use of these turns. So yes, it's nice um, putting the, the Raging Bolt to sleep, that's great, but you sacrifice a lot of HP on both the Chiyu and the Clefairy. So yeah. I, I completely agree with his choice to bring in the Calyrex Shadow right here. Um, and I also like the fact that Mateo decides to bring in the Urshifu kind of preemptively, knowing that, oh, there's maybe something coming out on Lorenzo's side and I want to be prepared. I don't want to sit there on the field with two special attackers with what, what would it be, like minus, minus two, minus three special attack from the Snarls. Mm. So um, I like the switch here going into the, the Urshifu because even though he might not threaten a KO on the Calyrex because of the Citrus Berry, he definitely threatens a lot of damage on that Pokemon. Um, on the other hand though, Calyrex, we've seen it in the game before, Draining Kiss, there's two targets now that it would be super effective against, yeah, yeah. and it could recover a lot of HP with that. So if Lorenzo can kind of choose the right target here, um, yeah, it looks very tough for Mateo to play out of the situation. Well, where there is Clefairy, there could be a way with those things. But uh, yeah, that's going to be the Astral Barrage that could be coming out from the Calyrex here as Mateo needs to try and weather this storm. Of course, Astral Barrage won't be doing any damage into Terrapagos if it's coming in. Incineroar going to take it really well as well, as well as threatening big damage back into the Calyrex with its knockoff move right now. The Intimidate drop, not going to matter onto these two special attackers, but it is time to terrestrialize trainers in this game three here at the Bologna 
special event, and it's going to be the restricted for Lorenzo Terraferi onto the Calyrex. So it's actually now going to be taking not very effective damage from dark type moves that once threatened it so very heavily. U turn coming out oh. onto the Chi Yu. That's big damage, a neutral hit given that the Chiyu is part fire and part dark type there. And Mateo pivoting around, deciding instead to bring mm. in something from the back, potentially the Raging Bolt, and there it is, going to be landing on the field once more, just trying to burn some of those turns of sleep. Yeah, so Mateo didn't want to make a committal play there, just going for the U-turn. Uh, I feel like there was really a good opportunity for him to go for a prediction, Ooh. potentially go for an offensive move. Um, whether that would be going for the Surging Strike into the Calyrex or maybe um, into the Chiyu just to get a knockout there, but instead saying, hey, I really want to keep this Pokémon around, um, but now at what cost? Yeah. Um, you've, you've lost the Raging Bolt, which, which is fine, it was asleep anyway, and you can reposition now with Inc uh, But that Calyrex, yeah, it's looking pretty scary right now. Yeah, it certainly is. And crucially, it was the Chi Yu that claimed the knockout onto the Raging Belt there, not the Calyrex. Yep. So it didn't get a boost to its special attack. It's not quite steamrolling in the way that it would want right now. You can see Lorenzo hovering over the nasty plot button there because that really is the best way that you can be dealing with this Terrapagos given Astral Barrage. It's going to be doing nothing. You've got the Beads of Ruin reducing the special attack of everything on the field as well. That means that Calyrex would be taking more damage from the Terra Star Storm were it to come out from Mateo's Terrapagos right now. It's restricted, staring down, restricted on the field. Is, is it going to be time for Terrastalize? Well, let's get into this turn and see. Yeah, of course, that's something we shouldn't forget about Matteo still having that available. And, um, oh, that's that's very scary mm. going for the Nasty Blood, but no fake out coming out from Matteo. So let's see, will it just be maybe okay. a parting shot? Uh, Call Mind, okay. Both restricted Pokemon deciding it's it's uh, the time to, to boost things up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, With the Calyrex deciding it's time to ooh, go for those nasty wow. thoughts and the burn connecting down into the Clefairy there. So that's going to be whittling away the HP. So at some point, that Clefairy, when the timer has run out, will be going down. Trapagos clearing its mind of any of the nasty thoughts that might be going through uh, Calyrex's head there yeah. with that Call Mind move. Yeah, that was a that was a hard commit there by Mateo saying, hey, yeah, the Chiyu is definitely going to yeah. switch out. I'm going to launch the Will-O-Wisp there, predicting potentially the Mian Shao or the Rillaboom. The last Pokemon of Lorenzo isn't even revealed yet, but yeah, he definitely didn't want to, to get the, the burn here on the Clefairy, but was hoping to hit one of those physical attackers. Um, that didn't happen. And also Lorenzo didn't protect the Calyrex, but instead went for the Nasty Pot right away. So now this is a very, very situation, very scary situation um, for Mateo to stare down. But fortunately, Terrapagos and Incineroar, those are two of the better Pokemon to have, even against a boosted Calyrex Shadow Rider on the field. Yeah, they certainly are. At least Draining Curse would be doing neutral damage into either of these Pokemon. You've got Helping Hand there from the Clefairy and mm. that Sing, of course, that was so powerful into the Raging Bolt. Lorenzo bringing it right down to the wire, because once again, these are the margins we're dealing with here, trainers. These are two fantastically well-versed players of the game. And now it's time for Mateo to commit to that Terra Stella onto the Terrapagos once more. Happens in all of three of the games in this fascinating set so far. Let's see yep. what Terrapagos can achieve right now. This could go either way. Lorenzo decided to go all in. Helping hand coming out for this Calyrex. Here comes the Draining Kiss. Who's going to be the target of choice? This is plus two with the nasty plot. The Terra Shell broken. That Terrapagos still takes it so well. Yeah, it does take it so well. And we'll fire back with the Terra Star Storm, which will be super effective against it that will. Calyrex. Of course, Friend Guard will protect oh, it a little bit. But that's goodness. so much damage. Knocking out the Clefairy and doing so much damage to the Calyrex Shadow Rider. Huge damage with that. That Calm Mind boost, and of course, that is how Terra Stella works. It's going to be super effective into a Terrastalized target, no matter what the actual type is. Parting Shot going to be bringing down that Calyrex to just slightly less nasty than it was before, with plus one to its special attack instead of that plus two. So now, in terms of offense, this Calyrex and the Trapagos are matching each other on the field. You've still got the Chiyu in the back for Lorenzo, so you can be reducing the special attack with Snarl. With the Urshifu hitting the field, the Chiyu is really, really threatened if that were to come out. Yeah, no, this is the perfect situation that Mateo was, was trying to play for. Now the Carry Rex is damaged enough that Searching Strikes will get the KO. So Lorenzo forced to reveal the final Pokemon. It is the Mian Shao. Um, of course, that's a good Pokemon to have here. Fake Out threatening the Urshifu, Close Combat threatening the Terrapagos, but you can only go for one of the two. Yeah. So which one is it going to be? Urshifu is threatening Lorenzo's Carry Rex. That would be a one-hit KO right away. But if Lorenzo went for the fake out there and potentially the draining kiss, then maybe 
um, the Kelly Rex could take another one of those uh, Terra Star Storms with the recovery. So Matteo has to think about, okay, what do I want to do here? Uh, can I, maybe Matteo can just go for Surging Strikes and Terra Star Storm. Um, but then, yeah, with how much HP Draining Kiss can recover, it could be quite close as to whether the Terra Star Storm would get the knockout. Well, exactly, yeah, super effective into the Urshfu. The Calares is going to be restoring a huge amount of HP here. This is what Lorenzo needs to do, try and get that HP back in order to weather the storm that's uh, coming out from I Mateo. Think, I think he can take one. I think he might be able to take one as well. This is going to be a spread type move as well, not doing quite as much damage. And now the Calares get that special attack boost that's been so coveted by Lorenzo. He here comes the Terra Star Storm raining down, plummeting the Pokemon on the field. It's both the Mian Shell and the Calyrex. The Calyrex oh, is brought down to 9, nine HP. HP. The Mian Shell surviving on the Focus Sash there. Wow, and of course, we were used to seeing some of the Terra Star Storms early in the battle, but mind you, Sometimes we had the special attack drop on the Terrapagos. Sometimes we had the Clefairy with a friend guard next to the Calyrex. But now for the first time, there was no damage modifiers on the Calyrex side of the field. And so with that call mine from earlier, now the Terra Stars are really doing so much damage and yeah, barely missing the KO. But of course, now the game isn't over yet. Oh, Mateo bringing in the Incineroar, fake out pressure. And that could be the opportunity to make a prediction now on Mateo's side. I mean, surely. Lorenzo isn't just giving up the Calyrex for free here, right? But that would mean that maybe Terrapagos could set up a substitute, for example, or another Call Mind. So once again, very, very uh, yeah, close game here um, to close up the set. Yeah, really close. Just look at those HP bars remaining to Lorenzo in the back, all in nearly single digits. It could not be coming down to the wire more as Calyrex wisely protecting. is vulnerable to a fake out now. It's and no longer he predicted a ghost type, it. But it gets the predict, and Chiu is going down to that fake out. Lorenzo with a resigned nod there. Has the Trapagos gone for another oh, Carmine? No, it's a and substitute. He committed to it too. Really huge. The Trapagos getting that substitute set up. So Mateo seems to be locking up this game right wow, now. Well played by Mateo. He really went all in there saying, okay, Calyrex is your restricted Pokemon. It's boosted up so many times now with the Grimnay, with the nasty plot from earlier. Of course, the parting shot in there too, but uh, that doesn't matter at this point. So he's saying, you're going to protect the Calyrex and I'm going to hard commit. Fake out, knock out the partner Pokemon, substitute. So now the Trapagos is safe from um, any potential fake out that could happen. But the game still isn't over because Mian Shao and Calyrex both outspeed the Terrapagos. Draining Kiss and Close Combat could knock out the Terrapagos even when behind the Substitute. So the counterplay to that could be, of course, to maybe protect the, the um, Terrapagos, oh. but then the Incineroar could be under pressure. So no yeah. Protect coming out. Draining Kiss, that will easily knock out the Substitute, I would assume. Yeah, let's then, see if that, yes, that yeah. Terrapagos substitute is going to fade. And then if the close combat is going to be following up, then the Terrapagos is going to be going down. And the Draining Kiss going to recover a little bit of a vital HP there. Is oh it going to be God. enough? Close combat into the Terrapagos. That's going to be enough to secure the knockout. This Incineroar is left all by itself, but it can only target one Pokemon at a time because it yeah. only has access to single target yeah. moves. Yeah. So, Lorenzo, is he going to be able to bring this back? Yeah, you have to knock out the, the Mian Shao this turn, but this Incineroar does not have Flare Blitz. So even if... Draining Kiss is not enough to knock out the Incineroar. Yeah. The worst it can do is, is what, uh, a Will-O-Wisp, a, a knockoff? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think Lorenzo crawled his way back into this game and uh, might be able to take it. Oh, it's a big HP bar remaining for Incineroar here. How much the Draining Kiss is going to do? This is a plus two Calyrex, and yes, Incineroar going to be able to take it, but now it's that Terra Fairy knockoff is going to be dealing not very effective damage into the Calyrex. It looks like Lorenzo has been able to pilot wow. this horse right through to the grandstand right here in Bologna, and this is only round three. The battle is forfeited. Matteo has lost. Lorenzo Silvestrini, your winner of Swiss round three. Wow, oh my God. First round here of uh, Pierluigi's team. Got some very fast Pokemon going to benefit from the sun, but you've only got that Thunder Wave that's accessible on the Grim Snarl from the on side of the field. But here we go, Jamie, getting into game one. We are going to see Johan lead out with that Lunala and the Rillaboom, and Pierluigi leading with that Incineroar and the Flutterman dropping a big Intimidate, important one, onto that Rillaboom to start us off. Yeah, that might keep that Flutterman out of range of any Woodhammer KO that could have been an option, but of course there is the Focus Sash keeping it pretty safe in that 
that regard as well. No Shadow Ball available on the Flutter main, so you're not threatening Lunala with huge damage at this point, but what you are threatening is with that Taunt just to be able to stop the Calm Mines. The Lunala wants to be able to set up here. You don't have Meteor Beam on this set. You've got no way to boost your special attack except for that Calm Mind, but that would easily be put a stop to with the Taunt as well. Incineroar will be threatening a lot of damage with the knockoff as well, so you could break the Shadow Shield pretty easily with the Flutter main. It can't be faked out on this turn, so maybe you're forced into faking out the Incineroar if you're on your own side. Well, we are going to start off with a terrestrialization here from your own side of the field, and it will be the Lunala turning into that fairy terror type, taking away the weakness from those potential attacks from the Flutter main. But we're just going to see it protect this turn, not want to risk taking anything like a Moonguy's Beam. Yeah, not at all. And it was the Moonguy's Beam, and it was launched off into that Flutter main. No fake out from either player here, uh, just going on the offense immediately. And it's just a U-turn from the Rillaboom, but not targeting that Flutter main. It could have been a double up KO, break the Focus Sash with Moonguy's Beam, and then U-turn gets that last bit of HP. But no, targeting into the Incineroar, getting that guaranteed U-turn off here into the Landorus. So they're going to be able to throw in a lot of damage into the Incineroar. Yeah, that's a really nice play here. We're going to see the parting shot come out from the Incineroar. It's going to weaken it on that special attacking side by one stage. So meaning that those Moonguy's Beams, those Moonblasts aren't going to be hitting as hard, threatening Pierluigi's side of the field. But you do have to worry because this Landorus Incarnate has come in. We know that they are generally used to carrying things like the Life Orb, boosting those attacks, and it will threaten with the Sludge Bomb into that Flutter Main. But here we go, the parting shot out from the Incineroar, the Cryon coming onto the field, Aura Calcum Pulse activating, Boot bringing the sun with it and activating that protosynthesis onto that Flutter Main. Yeah, now Coridon will be doing so much damage in that sun. Uh, the Flutter Main is going to be outspeeding everything with that speed boost. And the Landorus has come in in the face of a Flutter Main that is carrying Icy Wind here with no opportunity now to go for a Terrestrialization to get rid of that quad weakness. There's not really much stopping for an Icy Wind here to both break the Shadow Shield on the Lunala and do massive damage to the Landorus. Yeah, so we are seeing because of that, the Lunala just retreat out and in its place comes the Pelipper. It is going to bring the ability with it, override that sun, take away that protosynthesis boost and take away any boosts to those fire type attacks from that Coridon. Returning with a terrestrialization on their side of the field, Pierre Luigi going to terrestrialize that Coridon now into that fire type. It is still going to be susceptible to potentially any earth powers coming out from that Landorus, but is the Flutter Main going to lock in with an icy wind? It does. Is it going to connect? That's the big question. Pelipper avoids into the Landorus and doing some big damage there, but able to survive more importantly, though, lowering that speed. Yeah, and the Flare Blitz follow-up here is going to be crucial. Did it target the Lunala that switched into Pelipper? No, it looks like it is following up into that Landorus, not caring the, about the fact that the Drizzle was set up, not going to care at all and KO this Landorus. Very, very nicely done, because if that Landorus would have survived that turn, that would have been huge damage thanks to that terrestrialization into the Fire type. Yeah, and even if it went into the, the Flutter Main with a Sludge Bomb to try and remove that potential kind of control aspect of Pierre Luigi's side, it probably would have been able to pick up the Knockout as well. Putting John in a really awkward position here where now you are going to be threatened by potentially an icy wind like we've mentioned before it can break that that the um, the shadow shield on the lunala and then it's going to be more susceptible to big damage if you are pierre luigi are you thinking at this point let's get my cryodon off the field so i can bring it back in to activate that sun or are you just going for all out attacks at this point potentially not really the best idea in front of something like the pelipper that we've already mentioned it does resist those hits and because of that we are seeing it return to the back yeah it makes perfect sense incineral is always a good switch in, uh, in defensively in the face of a lunala Maybe not so much a Pelipper, but you do want to be resetting that Aura Calcum Pulse on the Coridon to overwrite the Drizzle. Pelipper is going to be switching out as well here, maybe thinking the same thing. Keep both of the weathers in the back, so there is still the opportunity to overwrite things. Rillaboom will be switching in here for you, and we're going to be able to threaten with Fake Out once again. On the offense now with the Flutterman, going for Moonblast. A good chunk of damage into that Rillaboom. Uh, not breaking the Shadow Shield on the Nunala here, oh. and not taunting the Nunala as well. That could have been an opportunity to stop this Calm Mind that it has now gone for and become even more bulky actually quite strong as well. Yeah, that, that can't mind Johan taking the perfect opportunity here, knowing that the Shadow Seal was intact, probably able to take a flurry of attacks. The Crydon not in the best of positions against that Pelipper, taking the opportunity to get that plus one now going to be a big threat, especially to that Fluttermane or anything that wants to switch in on that slot. The Crydon, even though it can come in, does not want to come in on a Moonbreaker Guy's Beam at plus one. The Incineroar 
in a good position. It has got active faker, but you can say the same for the Rillaboom as well. Yeah, and the Rillaboom usually is trained faster than opposing Incineroar. So if there was going to be a fake out from the Incineroar, it does not matter. Rillaboom went first and has flinched that Incineroar with its own fake out. Icy Wind being launched off by the Fluttering. Super effective into the Rillaboom. Still not much damage thanks to that Assault Best. The Shadow Shield has been broken on Ulana. Not, not going to really matter too much because it's going to recover straight back up to that Shadow Shield. And the Moon Guy's Beam is now fired off into that Fluttermane. Of course, it is holding that oh. Focus Sash, is going to be able to survive on that 1 HP. Yeah, taking it right down to that 1 HP. And see, you know, a really good turn here from uh, Joan, where he is able to go for that Faker, prevent the Incineroar from getting any attacks off, or uh, disrupting a bit further with that parting shot. And now the Fluttermane in a precarious position, but able to try and get some last ditch damage off before potentially going down to another attack from either the Rillaboom, it is in range of that Grassy Glide, of course. Got to keep that in mind if you are Pierre Luigi. Yeah, no, it'll depend on the speeds as well of the Nala. You tend to run it quite bulky if you're running the car mindset. So will the Incineroar be able to outspeed the Lunala after that icy wind drop? It'll be close, depending on the training, whether you're able to get a parting shot off and reduce the special attack of the Lunala. And yes, the Incineroar was faster than that now icy winded Lunala and faster than the Rillaboom. So able to parting shot into that Rillaboom, reduce the attack even further and get that fake out pressure back onto the field. Uh, the Fluttermane did switch into the Raging Bolt. So that is an opportunity to switch in that Fluttermane once again, because if you switch in the Coridon here, the Oracle Compulse will be nice, but then you won't be able to, uh, you'll be overwritten again with the Pelipper in the back, so that might be why the Fluttermane is switching in here. Oh. But no, not just taking a KO that could have been launched off into the Incineroar. A second Calm Mind here for this Lunala. Yeah, and the Lunala still has that Shadow Shield intact now uh, with that Grassy Terrain Recovery. We are going to see a U-turn come out from the Rillaboom into that Fluttermane, take it down and be able to reposition. Potentially going to have to bring in that Pelipper now. So it puts almost the Weather War advantage back in Pierre Luigi's side of the, the field because now you've got the ability to bring the Cryodon in. The only issue is if you're bringing the Cryodon in, you want to make sure that you're getting that slot correct because if you bring it in on potentially a Moon Guy's beam, then it could get a bit a bit dicey. Yeah, but here comes the Cryodon. The Pelipper was forced to switch in here, but that was at the end of the turn, and now Pierluigi is able to bring in the Cryodon. Oracle Compulse going to be benefiting that Raging Bolt as well, going to get that Protosynthesis boost to its special attack. And now the Pelipper is very much threatened here. Thunderbolt will absolutely do massive damage to that Pelipper. But at least the Nunala's, again, still Shadow Shielded at this point. It's still back at full HP, and it's got plus two to both its special attack and its special defense here. So the Raging Bolt won't be threatening anything into the Lunala. You really have to be relying on this Coridon to do the absolutely massive damage here. But then because the Shadow Shield is intact and Coridon's faster than Lunala, uh, than Raging Bolt, you'll have to attack the other way around. So maybe consider a Thunderclap to break the Shadow Shield, and then maybe the Flare Blitz would be able to pick up the K on the Lunala. Because of that threat, we are seeing the Pelipper switch out. The Rillaboom going to enter the field once again for Yohan and bring the Grassy Terrain with it. There is some big fire threats on the field. Is the Crydon going to go down into that slot? We see a Thunderclap into the Rillaboom slot, which was the Pelipper, not going to hit, and the Collision Course doubling up into that slot, but it does leave the Lunala open to get an attack off the Rillaboom going down, and a big knockout here for Pei Luigi. Yeah, absolutely. The Lunala is still completely free here. Going to go for a Moonblast, so assumably into that Raging Bolt. It's now at plus two, and it has Terras Light, so that's absolutely massive damage, <laughs> and it is just going to be a one-hit knockout into the Assault Vest Raging Bolt. We've seen that survive so many attacks so often, but no, if you allow too many car mines there, that's just going to be a one-hit knockout. Yeah, and really nice played by Owen here, because now able to bring that Pelipper in. The Weather War is locked at this stage because now you've only got the Incineroar to bring in. You can't switch out that Coridon anymore. The Drizzle is going to be active for the next five turns. You aren't going to have that boost. The Coridon, we've already talked about how bad a matchup it has against that Pelipper. It's really going to struggle. And now with the Pelipper having access to both Hurricane, that's 100% accurate in the rain, and that Weather Ball, it looks like that. So maybe Gargonacle is the answer here. Well, all to play for going into this game too for Pierluigi, and they do make an adjustment here as they lead out with the Flutterman and the Amoongus there. The adjustment from Pierluigi as Johan leads out with that Lunala and the Rillaboom once again. Yeah, the Amoongus can definitely be a way of slowing down this Lunala for sure. You'll be able to get the spores into it pretty safely. Yes, the Rillaboom can go for a fake out on this turn, but then you can't fake out the Flutterman. This is a 
very straightforward to taunt play into the Nala potentially to stop the Calm Mind. Of course, you can just go on the offensive like we saw in that turn one with the Moon Guys beam immediately into the Flutter Main. But yeah, Moon Guys quite a nice adjustment here because Yoan isn't really threatening it much on this first turn. If it gets a few Calm Minds on the Nala, it would be able to do massive damage. But this would be an opportunity for Amoongus to pretty easily get a spore pretty safely into that Lunala. Yeah, and even if it doesn't get the, the spore here because of this Faker, which is going to prevent it from moving this turn, it's going to be active next turn. We do see this followed up with a Moonblast from that Ooh. Flutterman, dropping that special attack. Most importantly there, as a Moon Guys Beam going to be fired back into the Flutterman, but we know it has got that Focus Sash, so not going to be threatened by a kill and not even taking it down to the Focus Sash because it hasn't got those boosts under its belt. Yeah, the very, very nice special attack drop there for Pierre Luigi. Now that Lunala is really not threatening too much and it's still going to get that recovery, but it seems like it's going to be just shy of the Shadow Shield. So it's going to be able to take full damage potentially from this Moonblast from the Futtermane. But yeah, it took so much damage from the Moonguys Beam. That's going to be in range of Grassy Glide now, even if potentially the Incineroar is going to switch in for the Amoongus. But now this is the turn that Amoongus can threaten the Lunala slot with a Spore because you don't have Fake Out active anymore. You reduced your special attack but thanks to the Moonblast on Lunala. Not going to be able to pick up any KOs on the Amoongus at all. The Rillaboom just forced a U-turn out or maybe Grassy Glide KO the Futtermane. So, yeah, quite a nice adjustment here for Pierluigi, I think, going for that Amoongus because you're going to be able to shut that, down that Lunala quite nicely now. Yeah, the tables have turned here from the first match where Johan had the Lunala. Pierluigi didn't really seem to have an answer for it. Well, Johan has to find an answer for this Amoongus because right now it doesn't look like he got an answer at all. We are going to just see a Protect come out from the Futtermane, not want to take any damage this turn, leave the door open for this Moongus to potentially get a big a spore off as we see a Calm Mind from that Lunala going to start to set up, just resetting that special attack stat though after the special attack drops, so plus one on the special defense, neutral on that special attack as we see the U-turn go on to the Protect from the Fluttermane, leaving the Moongus open to go for a spore and it will be into that Rillaboom oh. slot, trying to predict maybe a switch in there, not capitalizing on getting that Lunala. Yeah, not at all, so Lunala got away scot-free there, getting a free Calm Mind and now it's back up to the Shadow Shield once again, so uh, maybe a missed opportunity there for Pierre Luigi. See what he was going for there, trying to catch that Rillaboom going for a switch, uh, but yeah, the U-turn went into the Fluttermane. If the U-turn went into the Amoongus, that would have pivoted out and potentially allowed the Spore to go into whatever switched in, so yeah, it, make, it still makes sense to go for that Spore, especially if you're protecting, uh, expecting maybe a Protect and a U-turn uh, so that you don't get Spore with the Nunala, but unfortunately, Joanne getting the better end of it for uh, against Pierre Luigi, getting a free Calm Mind here, so even if it goes to sleep from the Spore, that should be all right because you'll be able to survive quite a few turns here. A big grassy glide into that Fluttermane, taking it down. So, Johan taking a big lead here and the Moonblast following up into that Moongus. Plus one, not really going to be doing as much damage. Maybe expecting a Terrestrialization or a switch there, but is resisted, taking a special attack drop. Not going to matter too much as the Spore once again goes into that Rillaboom slot, predicting maybe a U turn there. Johan really capitalizing on the mind games here. Yeah, getting the better end of it twice now. The Amoongus was a great adjustment for that lead to be able to put a stop to the Nunala, but it's not going for the Nunala here. They're trying to get those predictions, maybe feeling a little bit behind in the game, trying to get ahead, uh, catching Johan out. But Johan going for a pretty straightforward play there. You can't Rage Powder away the Grassy Glide KO into that Flutter main. The Moonblast was probably covering for that Raging Bolt that could have switched in that would have resisted the Grass type attacks, or even the Coridon would have been able to switch in and resist the Grassy Glide as well. So um, just covering for that, not doing as much much damage to the Amoongus, but it's still perfectly fine to launch off even more offense here because it hasn't been put to sleep again. Two missed opportunities for a sport, unfortunately, for Pierluigi. Is it going to be a third missed opportunity here? We are going to see the Terrestrialization now come out from the Raging Bolt on Pierluigi's side. It is going to go for that Fairy Terrestrialization. Remember, it has got access to the Assault Vest, so going to be able to take attacks from particularly that Lunala a lot better going into this turn, but no attacks <laughs> coming out. Just another combine from this Lunala on Johan's side of the field, boosting that special attack further and further as we get deeper into this match. The Woodhammer coming out, picking up. It is a big hit into that Raging Bolt. Now not resisting, lost that Dragon Typing. And the Weather Bolt coming out from the Raging Bolt. And it is going to do negligible damage. There's no weather on the field to take advantage of it, but the Amoongus now taking full advantage, finally putting that Lunala to sleep, landing the Spore. There we go. The Lunala finally asleep, but that's two Calm Minds once again going to be able to threaten 
done absolutely massive damage. There's a great play there from Yoan, catching the Terrestrialization on the Raging Bolt very nicely, because that Woodhammer is a two-hit knockout. And yeah, the Weather Ball, there's no weather, so it's just not going to do the damage that Spieloichi is looking for. If that Amoongus had switched into the Crydon, then suddenly there's a Fire-type Weather Ball that's going to be doing absolutely massive damage to the Rillaboom, but just the regular old Weather Ball with no weather, it's half as strong, doesn't get the boost from the weather, so yeah, it's just going to tickle that Rillaboom. And now it's heavily threatened by the knockout with the Woodhammer. Yeah, we are going to see because of that heavy knockout threat there, the Cryodon make its way onto the field. Potentially soak up the Woodhammer coming out. The Amoongus now in a nice, comfortable position here, but that Aricol Compulse activating, bringing the sun to the field now. And the Rillaboom will be threatened by these Fire-type attacks for the next turns, but not wanting to contend with that. Going for the U-turn straight in to that Cryodon. Does Johan have the Pelipper in the back? If he does, looks like he does. Going to override that sun straight away and then start to threaten that Amoongus, which really doesn't want to be sitting in front of something with Hurricane, especially when it's 100% accurate in the sun. Yeah, definitely not. And that could have been the opportunity there. If that spore would have gone into the Rillaboom, that would have caught the Pelipper very nicely. But no, it's just the Pollen Path just going to be able to do a little bit of damage to the Pelipper again. But Pierluigi, the attacks that he's been going for are just not doing the damage. You've had that really weak weather ball without the weather. You've got the Pollen Path that's hit into the not very effective Pelipper now. Lunala's just been able to sit there on the field. It's not threatened at all here as well because the Drizzle is on the field. So the Flare Blitz doesn't do anything. It hasn't gone for its Terrestrialization yet, so uh, the Collision Course isn't going to be able to affect the Lunala at all. So, yeah, the Lunala is still just in a fantastic position, even though it's sleep. It's just going to wait a couple of turns, then wake up, and then launch off some really powerful Moon Guys beams. To try and control the weather, Pierluigi switching that Crydon out, bringing in this Raging Bolt. Remember, it has Terrestrialized, so not going to resist any flying type attacks if that is what the Pelipper opts for. Lunala still sitting asleep. sleeper. Hurricane into this Amoongus isn't enough. Not quite enough to pick up the knockout here onto the little mushroom as it does activate its citrus berry. Just going to recover some health. It does leave the door open for it to potentially put this pellet to sleep now, but not opting for that. Opting for maybe a more smarter choice. Recovering some health on this pivotal Pokemon in what seems to be the Raging Bolt for Pierluigi. Yeah, that's a very nice side pollen puff there with the Raging Bolt. You need some more HP on your Pokemon because otherwise everything would be in range of that plus two Moongeist Beam that could be coming out from the Lunala. Now that you've got that recovery, that's not going to be the case for the Raging Bolt. We saw it being knocked out in, in one shot by the Terra Fairy Moonblast last time, but that was because it was still a Dragon type. Now it's gone for the Fairy Terrestrialization. It will be able to at least survive the attacks that could be launched off by the Lunala, and the Pelipper won't be threatening too much either as well because of that Assault Vest. So, yeah, very nice side Pollen Puff there to be able to get that recovery. Maybe get Pierre Luigi back into this game because it, st it still looks like he's on the back foot because he still doesn't really have an answer for this Lunala at the moment. Yeah, and uh, the, the Pelipper going to be kept for later on, preserve that Drizzle ability as the Rillaboom enters the field once again. Going to have that immunity to the Spore if it is directed from the Amoongus into that slot. The Lunala finally wakes up and fires off a big Moon Guys beam. It is going to be into the Amoongus, and it is going to be enough to pick up that threat. So reducing down Pierre-Louis options from three to two now, locking in the, we the Weather War. The Pelipper going to be able to come out, and the Draco Meteor now into the Rillaboom. Not going to be enough to pick up the knockout there on this Pokemon. Johan got a big advantage here. Four Pokemon, two Pair Luigi's two. Yeah, and in any kind of Weather War match, as soon as you've knocked up two Pokemon, that just gives you the absolutely massive advantage because you've still got the available uh, availability switch in your Pelipper here to overwrite this Oracle Compulse, but the Coridon can no longer activate that. It's no, no longer can switch out. It's stuck on the field. And now the Lunala is just not going to be threatened once again. It's just basically the position that Johan jo really wants because, yeah, the Pelipper just need, needs to be able to switch in there, overwrite the Oracle Compulse, and then take the game for Yuan. Flawless victory there for Johan. An incredible performance made it extremely... Be the only Pokemon that can hit that Terrakos super effectively as well. Yeah, so are we expecting the Comfy to make an appearance? Mm, very likely. If you're going to be Calm Minding with this Terrakos yep. that has been led with the Incineroar, assumably you want to go for something like a Fake Out and a Calm Mind mm -hmm. in the face of the Special Attackers. So, uh, yeah, wouldn't be surprised if something like the Comfy's in the back. But it's going to be the Fluttermane and the Tornadoes here led for Joseph. Yeah, and Joseph, probably anticipating this uh, Fake Out lead coming out from Alessio, deciding to lead off with two Pokémon. First of all, we will see here Booster Energy activate. It is the speed, uh, just giving confirmation also to Alessio, but that is to be expected with the Icy Wind on the set. Uh, but uh, what I was saying is Tornado's having that covered cloak also immune to the side effect of Fake Out. So yeah, Fake Out not really that helpful in this situation and um, gives Joseph now the opportunity to go ahead and attack with both Pokemon, but pretty 
notable on his team. There's no taunt on either Pokemon. No taunt, so it's free to go for a Calm Mind coming out for the Trap Goss, but yeah, no Fake Out available. It's a Ghost and a Covert Cloak Pokemon. Moonblast just fired off immediately into the Incineroar. Bleak Wind Storm gonna miss on the Incineroar. That could have been a very nice damage there, but at least you get to break the Terra Shell of yep. the Terrapagos. Uh, so doing a little bit of chip, but that Terra Shell now is broken. But there's that Calm Mind. No taunt available on the Fluttermane or the Tawniness. A very, very free Calm Mind here for the Terrapagos. Yeah, and uh, the Incineroar now has the chance to go for a parting shot. Decides to go after that Tornadus. Um, just wants to make sure that it leaves the field. It, I think it maybe it was a little bit more likely that the Fluttermane could have gone for Protect to, to stall that. Um, but yeah, once again, no taunt on either of these two Pokemon that very frequently carry it means that Terrapicos was safe to go for the Call Mind, Incineroar was safe to go for the Parting Shot, and there is the Comfy. Yeah, yeah, the Comfy's gonna be able to bring that Terrapicos right back up to its Terra Shell if it does want to go for that. The Floral Healing, it would recover a little bit, but the Terra Shell would be the important part. Yep. Maybe you want to consider going for Trick Room here in the face of mm. Fluttermane and Tornadus. The Terrapicos would be put in a very, very strong position yep. if the Amoongus is not waiting in the back. So you do have to contend with that. Do you want to go for that uh, speed control with the Trick Room, but then maybe open yourself up to Amoongus, or do you just say, well, I'm, I've calm-minded now. I'm not taking much damage from yes. either the Fluttermane or the Tornadus. I'll just keep Floral Healing myself and just launching off my big attacks now. Yeah, because if you think about it, even if it is that Amoongus in the back, it is... Uh, pretty likely that, of course, the, the own Terrapagos is also there for Joseph. So that would mean four special attackers. And I mean, if you can just get a couple more Call Mines in there, even with that Amoongus, that would be not so problematic. But we see the Moonblast coming out once again and avoid on the Bleak Wind Storm. This time it's the Terrapagos, but both Pokemon on Alessio making it through the turn. Comfy healing a little bit on the Citrus Berry. And once again, Alessio's Pokemon can do whatever they want, basically. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be that Terra Star Storm coming out from Terrapagos, now boosted with the Calm Mine, doing some wow. fantastic damage to that tournament. It's almost a one-hit knockout, surviving on 5 HP there. But yeah, the Comfey didn't go for any of its priority moves, so it must have been going for that Trick Room. Yeah, and now that Trick Room is set up, Alessio has Speed Control established. Trapicos didn't even take that much damage, so you don't even have to go for the, the healing here this turn, but instead you could um, just attack the Tornadoes with a Comfy, Draining Kiss to knock it out, and then maybe set up even another Call Mind. Yeah, you, like, there's nothing really stopping that at this point. The, the Trapicos is really free to go for whatever it wants to. Like, it does need to go for a Terrestrialization at least to be able to hit the Fluttermane yeah. effectively. Flamethrower, it's, it's going to be okay damage, but Terra Star Storm with its Stellar Typing yep. would actually do some really significant damage as well. But then you do commit your Terra very early to be able to go for that. You get rid of the access to the Terra Shell, which you could easily recover back up to with the Floral Healing, but yep. I wouldn't be surprised this turn if it is just Raining Kiss to do that last little bit of damage to the Tornadus. Yeah, I think Alessio might have some incentive here to, to keep up um, and, and delay the terrestrialization just a little bit, just so you can react to whatever is in the back for Joseph. But yeah. Joseph is thinking, okay, if you're not going for the terrestrialization this turn, I will do it with my Fluttermane, because um, I don't think that, yeah, you will go for this um, Terra Star Storm, and instead wants to go after the Comfy, I assume. Yeah, and the Comfy's just going for that Draining Kiss to get that little bit of damage onto the Tornadus. Now the Fluttermane did go for the terrestrialization. It would be open to a Terra Star Storm, just as the normal type here, but yeah, that's a free opportunity for a second Calm Mine on the Terrapagos. It's not really going to care what the Fluttermane's going for here. Yes, a Terra Fairy Moonblast would do some nice damage, but not as much as you would hope How much uh, into will the Calm Mines. But it might be interesting for the Comfy to take care of that Floral Healing. Yeah, it's into the Comfy, but not enough. The Comfy, actually, it's reasonably, especially bulky and able to survive that Terra boosted attack from the Fluttermane. Wow, yeah, that is pretty huge because then this was a little bit of a wasteful terrestrialization on Joseph's part. He was pretty, I'm pretty sure he was banking on that being a knockout, but yep. maybe just a little bit of HP recovery uh, that came out from the draining kiss uh, was, was just a couple of HP, but that definitely helped here. Um, and now Joseph, yeah, has to decide, okay, we get the confirmation, it is that Iron Hands waiting in the back, but decides that, no, it has to be the Terrapagos, um, because you need to deal with that Comfy first. Yeah, it does seem like it. And now Alessio is in a really, really strong position, it seems. You can go for a draining kiss to break the Terra Shell of the Terrapagos, and now that the Fluttermane has gone for its terrestrialization, if the Terrapagos on Alessio's side goes for the, the Terra Star Storm with the Stellar Terra type now, that's super effective. That's going to KO the Fluttermane easily, because you've got your plus two now with the Calm Mind, and it would be super effective. So yeah, really, really strong position for Alessio here. With no Amoongus in the back, that yep. means that you can't just go for the Spore into the Terrapagos. It makes perfect sense to bring your Terrapagos to the game. It's your Restricted, of course you want to. <laughs> it also makes sense to bring the Iron Hands to the game. It's the fighting type against the Terrapagos, but kind of needs to be the Amoongus there, given that the Comfey went for that Trick Room, because now Alessio's just in an absolutely de demanding posi a commanding position. Yeah, and Joseph with that Terrestrialization about on the Flutter Main, of course. Um, another downside is that the ter 
Rapagos cannot go for a Trestalization either, so that is not an option. Um, now Alessio just going for the Draining Kiss, just breaking that Terra Shield ability um, for any upcoming attacks with his own Terrapagos, and it's followed up by a Terra Star Storm. This will hurt a lot. Yeah, it's going to be able to pick up that KO thanks to that Terra Shell being broken. No need for the Terrestrialization, it seems, on Alessio's side of the field. That just normal Terra Star Storm easily enough to pick up the KO. Not dealing with the Flutter main just yet, conserving the Terrestrialization for maybe a more opportune moments. But yeah, there is the Moonblast. Now it is going to be able to pick up the KO on that Comfy. Yeah, and the Comfy did so much work this game, even without the Floral Healing. Just having the, the Draining Kiss knock out the Tornadus, and now just breaking the Terra Shield and setting up the Trick Room. So a really great game here for any Comfy lovers out there. Yeah, and Incineroar and in Iron Hand's going to be joining the field here, so Fake Out's available for both. The Calm Mind or start taking knockouts. Yeah, and the only Pokemon that can really deal with that plus two special defense, Terrapcot. Yep. It was just going for Bleak Wind Storm, and it was just missing a few Bleak Wind Storms. Yeah. So Tailwind wasn't necessary, so I wouldn't be surprised if that has been dropped. But no, seems like Tornadus is still going to be joining the field here for Joseph. But it's leaving the Ning Plus main, at least on the bench for now. It's going to be the Terrapcot led for both of these trainers. Incineroar is going to be paired with that Terrapcot on Alessio's side once again. Yeah, when using Choice Specs Trapagos myself, one of the worst things has been to lead it and the opponent has Fake Out. Yep. Because, yeah, what are you gonna do? You, you could switch out, sure, but if you stay in and they just use the Fake Out, then not only will you flinch, but you will also, of course, lose that Terra Shell ability. And that is just so bad. So I wouldn't be surprised uh, if Joseph decides to switch out. Seeing what he has in the back here, it's actually the Chiyu and the Amoongus, two Pokemon yeah. we haven't seen in the previous game, but you also don't want to switch in the Chiyu into the Fake Out because that would break the Focus Sash. So already a tough position for Joseph to maneuver. Yeah, well, you could bring in the Amoongus and that will get some Rocky Helmet Chip on the Fake Outs because assume like a, there's nothing wrong with the Fake out into the Terrapagos here. Yep. You break the, sh the Terra Shell and also flinch it. That's a free calm mind uh, for the Terrapagos to get to get going. So yeah, Amoongus here does seem like it's going to be quite necessary, but I assume that Joseph brought the Amoongus that does seem like it is going to be switching in here for mm -hmm. that Terrapagos. That was brought because of the Trick Room threat, but there's no Trick Room here. The yep. Terrapagos is going to be faster. Yeah, once again, the it looks like the, the timing doesn't quite work out for Joseph. So of course, um, yeah, nothing is decided yet. So this time it looks like Bleak Storm will hit both the Terrapagos and the Incineroar. Let's see if there are some speed drops as well in the mix. Doesn't look like it right here, of course. Um, Alessio's um, Terrapagos also holding that covered cloak, um, protecting for potential side effects there. It goes for a call mine and once again is set up. Yeah, it's ready to go and it's gonna completely ignore this Tornadus now. The Bleak Wind Storm, you saw it just did just barely any damage. Yes, that was the Terra Shell's not very effective here, but still, now it's Calm Minded. It's gonna be similar damage coming out. Yep. It's gonna be closer to Amoongus is gonna be in range of both the knockoff and the Terra Star Storm. You don't have Flare Blitz on this Incineroar, so it does have to be the knockoff instead. Might that be enough? But you have the Flamethrower on the Terrapagos. Oh, not a move yeah. we see very often, but that could be an option. But nope, instead it's just gonna be the Terra Star Storm doing oh, so enough. much damage. <laughs> Oh, but oh, it's faster! Okay, yeah, wow. interesting um, yeah, speed control or, or speed orders that we're seeing here. So Moongus putting that Terrapagos to sleep and it's not, actually not a knockout. I think this might be good for Alessio in this situation. What, don't you, what do you think? Yeah, I think that might be a bit more reasonable because yes, the Amoongus has now put the Terrapagos to sleep, but assumingly a Pokemon you're going to bring in is still going to be faster than the, the Amoongus. Like mo most po Pokemon available on Joe's side would be pretty speedy. That's going to be incredibly speedy with a pl uh, priority <laughs> draining kiss. Yep. Amoongus should maybe be in range of Draining Kiss. It's quite weak and yeah. it is resisted. And yeah. yeah, it'd be really close if that's going to be the case. But yeah, at the same time, I, you can always just switch out and get some Regenerator going. Yeah, I don't think that's a game that Joseph wants to play. So uh, I think it, it feels pretty obvious that the Amoongus is going for either Protect or Switch Out. But once again, you have two Pokemon in the back who don't like to take even the slightest yeah. of chip damage with the Focus Sash and the Terra Shell. Um, but I think you, you have to go for one of the two. Yeah, it has to be something. You're going to have to reposition somehow. And it looks like uh, it's going to be a switch out the Tornadus here instead, so not going for any of the Bleak Wind Storm damage that could have been coming out. It's going to be Chi Yu joining the field, so now Alessio has confirmation of all four Pokemon uh, that Joseph has brought to this match. Uh, Moog is also going to be switching out, so it's a double switch here for Joseph. Yeah, double switch to make the most out of those Tailwind turns, because of course, yeah, Moog is and Tornadus, those are not the Pokemon that you want on the board to do the damage, and nicely predicting the Protector on the yeah. Comfy. Terrapagos will take Eternal Sleep, and all of a sudden, Joseph used this uh, magnificently to put himself into a position to do a ton of damage the next turn. Yeah, this is a much better position for Joseph now. You can still go for a Flora Healing back to the Terra Shell on the Terrapagos, and it has burned its mandatory turn of sleep, so it could be waking up here. But if it doesn't, it's mm. going to take an onslaught of, assumedly, the, the Terra Star Stone coming out from the Terrapagos, whether it goes for the Terrestrialization or not. Yep. Uh, or, and the Chi going for his massive damage as well. It's got the overheat that can do 
huge amounts of damage. Maybe just going for Heatwave instead because there could be the Floral Healing back up uh, to be able to get that Terra Shell, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Yeah, nicely called, great animation here. A lot of flowers surrounding that Terra because bringing it back all the way to full HP, and because of that Terra Shell, that is more meaningful oh. than it might seem. Oh, that pause. Whew. We yeah. don't, don't know if it's the Terra Shell or the Mist, but it was a Mist on the Comfey, but at least you still break that Terra Shell on the Terrapagos. Yeah, there you see how little damage that does, but now the Terra Star Storm follow up into the Comfey oh. with a Beats of Ruin, a wow. clear knockout. Wow. Yeah, one hit knockout there for the Terrapagos. Uh, you can see the, the power of the choice specs just getting that immediate damage output. The Carmine is able to match that, but it takes a turn to get going. This is just immediate Beats of Ruin boosted choice specs boosted Terra Star Storm, taking care of the healing that's, uh, that was available on Alessio's side of the field. Yep. That also stops the potential of the Trick Room, so now the speed is going to be way more in Joseph's favor. Yeah, much different game that we're seeing here in game two. Um, Joseph playing it a lot more offensively from the get-go, setting up the Tailwind, putting the Terrapicos to sleep, so that was one way to stop it. But now the question is, what can Alessio use this one fake out turn for, and can the Terrapicos finally wake up? Yeah, it's taking okay, a couple of turns of sleep here, so it is reasonably likely, but it could still be staying asleep this turn. Uh, it's going to be going for that terrestrialization to make itself even more bulky here, getting those extra boosts to its stats. Fake out here, like we said, not on the first turn of the game, but still absolutely going to be able to break the Terra Shell of the Trapagos while also flinching it, so a really beneficial uh, uh, fake out coming out there. Dark Pulse, some nice damage, reasonable damage into the opposing Trapagos, but it uh... does stay asleep for all three turns here, so uh, a little bit of fortune going Joseph's way. Yeah, do you remember in, in Dynamax formats when you had a mm -hmm. Pokemon asleep and you yeah. just had to go for the Dynamax? Uh, it was, that feels like the worst. I mean, at least um, there's no counter on the terrestrialization effect, but still, I'm pretty sure Alessio would have much preferred if that Terrapagos just woken up, fired back with a powerful Terra Star Storm. Um, but now, once again, um, the, the ball is in Joseph's court. He still has the Chiyu healthy, Terrapagos still relatively healthy. Both of them will outspeed this next turn and can do a ton of damage. Yeah, I think it's going to be close if an overheat into a Terra Star Storm is able to KO that Terrapagos. Because yep. of that Calm Mind boost, it's going to be able to shrug off like a reasonable amount of the attacks, but you still got the Beat of Ruin active. That really helps the choice specs Terrapagos on, yep. on Joseph's side of the field. And it looks like the Terrestrialization is going to be committed here for Joseph. Going to be able to get that spread and stellar ter Terra Star Storm coming out on Lessio's side of the field. Yeah, with that, of course, um, might be enough to get the knockout on both, actually. Let's see how the damage uh, will play out. Now, finally, Terrapagos wakes up. Uh, we won't find out this turn because it is just to protect. Yeah, just to protect here. So just focusing fight onto the Incineroar for this turn. Heatwave is going to be the move of choice for the Chiyu. Trying to get some extra ship into that Terrapagos on Leslie's side of the field and does connect with the Incineroar and puts mm. it below half. Like, we just saw how much damage the Terra yep. Star Storm did to the Comfey with the Beads of Ruin. Surely it's going to be enough to pick up this Incineroar uh, with the Terra Stellar boost and the Beads of Ruin and the Choice Specs are going to be launching off into that Incineroar and should be picking up the knockout here, bringing yep. Alessio down to his final two Pokemon. Yeah, and the final Pokemon is still not yet revealed, so uh, looking at the team, it could be that Dragapult, it could be the Ogre Pond, or it could be the Rillaboom, um, all of which have their own little supporting kit to potentially support that um, Terrapagos, but it is that Dragapult. Yeah, the Dragapult's a very interesting pick here. It's going to be Focus Sash, so it's not going to be doing the massive damage that we've seen previously on the Choice Bandit sets, uh, but still going to be able to threaten some, some nice damage. The Dragon Darts uh, is going to be hitting both of these Pokemon, break the Focus Sash on the Chi and then follow up with a Terra Star Storm. That should be enough to pick up the Knockout. But I'm not so confident that would be the case since the opposing Terrapagos because it is a, such a bulky Pokemon and Dragon Darts won't be doing that much damage to it. But maybe the, because of the fact that they've both gone for the Terra, Terra Star Storm now being super effective, that might be enough to tip it over the edge. Yeah, it's a tough, tough call to make. I mean, I don't really see any reason for Joseph not to just go for another Terra Star Storm. Like, it doesn't feel like there's much stopping that, but looks like Joseph wants to play it a little bit more safe, maybe try to establish speed control once again, maybe set up the Tailwind or position Amoongus next to the Terrapagos so you can just make sure that you will get the Terra Star Storm off. Wise choice because, yeah, Alessio trying to go for the Thunder Wave, maybe for a Paralysis, um, but now after that Dark Pulse, Dragon Pulse down to 1 HP, Focus Sash activated, yes, but um, yeah, it's gonna get harder and harder for Alessio. Yeah, especially because this Terra Star Storm is now gonna be able to launch off uh, on Alessio's side. But Calm Mind boosted, so gonna do absolutely massive damage. 
Easily going to break the Focus Slash of the Chiyu. And with the Beads of Ruin, still not enough into the opposing Tornadus. Yep, yeah, very nicely trained there. Tornadus also in the first game, uh, surviving on just a slither of health. And now, potentially could go for that Tailwind, uh, just to ensure that um, for the next Pokemon to join the field for Joseph, um, for his own Terrapagos, uh, that speed control will be up. Yeah, and that will allow something like the Terrapagos to outspeed even the Dragapults. Dragapults such a speedy Pokemon, but uh, when you've got that Tailwind, it should be able to overwrite it. Like the Amoongus, yeah, that'll still be slower, uh, but uh, then you'd be in a really strong position. You just need to contend with the Paralysis. Maybe if the Tornadus gets paralyzed this turn and doesn't get that Tailwind, well, then suddenly the Dragapult might be in a reasonable position. Both Pokemon are in range of Dragon Darts here, so if that Tailwind hmm. doesn't go up, yep. and then that like, gets, gets fully paralyzed, that Dragon Darts could have picked up a double hmm. KO. Not on the Chi Yu here. It's going to be switching into well, a instead. Now it's a question of how well <laughs> do you know about your mechanics? Does, does Dragon Darts make contact? Uh, it shouldn't do. It's, it's firing Dreepies. The Dreepies yeah, the Dreepies I, I thought so too. Attack, I thought Dragapult. so too. Okay. Because then that, of course, could have been enough to, to get the, the one HP down with the Rocky Helmet on the Amoongus. But instead, it's a Sucker Punch that fails, followed up by the Terra Star Storm. But Tailwind did go through for Joseph. So even if both of those Pokemon will go down here, now Joseph has kind of the perfect setup. Uh, the Chiyu, Beats of Ruin, um, on the entire field next to the Terrapagos, which uh, cannot miss with Terra Star Storm. Yep. So it looks like this game is close to being locked up for Joseph. Yeah, I was very fortunate to get through that Paralysis to get that tail. And now that you know both your Pokemon are faster than the opposing Dragapult, Chiyu's being chipped a lot, though. Is that ring in range of Sucker Punch? Uh, it might be. Maybe you just go for Protect with the Chiyu first and launch the Terra Star Storm, knowing yep. that the Dragapult does not carry Protect on its moveset. Yeah, yeah, that would be very reasonable because then you, you'd want to be going for whatever fire type, assuming the overheat into the opposing Terrapagos. Doesn't matter if you do it this turn or the next turn, so yep. it would be pretty safe to go for a Protect, but if you're if you're com yeah. confident yeah. In, in being able to pick up the KO, there's sure. the, uh, <laughs> or, or, or surviving the Sucker Punch as well, yep. uh, you'd be able to go on the offense this turn as well. Yeah, why not? Um, I think either way it looks good for Joseph, who's now debating whether to go for that Dark Pulse um, just to get rid of the Dragapult, turning the Terra Star Storm once again into a single target move yep. um, against one opponent. Um, but I think regardless of what decision Joseph makes, it looks pretty good for him this game. Yeah, and it seems like he's going for the Protect the Chiyu and go for the Overheat next turn. Uh, the the Terrapagos will be able to pick up the KO on that Dragapult. Yeah, it was yep. the Sucker Punch trying to catch that Chiyu. We'll never know if that would have been enough to be able to pick up the Knockout, but this definitely will be into the opposing Dragapult. It's on one HP. It's definitely going to be KO'd to this Terra Star Storm. And with the Beta Ruin helping out the Terrapagos as well, yep. it's going to be super effective into that Terrasalize uh, Terrapagos. So yeah, picking up the knockout there and taking us into that game three. Yeah, rare interaction here, but uh, yeah, very powerful Terra Star Storm coming out from Joseph and with the Beats of Ruin, the Choice Specs, all the damage modifier, uh, it is enough for Joseph to win. Debating on whether Amoongus or uh, Iron Hands would still be better to bring to this game, because <laughs> both have their merits for sure against the Terrapagos. We saw the, the benefit of the Amoongus uh, in the game two, and we didn't get to see the Iron Hands perform in that game one. Uh, Alessio's sticking to what worked previously, though. It's still going to be the Incineroar and the Terrapagos coming out on Alessio's side of the field, and Tornius and Chi Yu starting out for Joseph. Yeah, so once again, um, Joseph is the one who's switching it up. Once again, it is the Tornadus, but this time, um, he, he doesn't have that many special attackers left uh, to bring for mm -hmm. a potential game four, which of course won't happen. But this time it's the Chiyu as the partner. So Chiyu, once again, doesn't like being faked out, but has access to Protect. And also has access to, I believe it's the Terra Ghost on the Chiyu, yeah? Yep. So uh, a little bit of yeah incentive for Alessio to not go for that fake out, because yeah, if you're caught with a, with a Terra Ghost, though then again, um, you would, yeah have the Terra be used, so that might lead to Alessio just saying, okay, I, I will go for the fake-out regardless, which yeah, is what we're, we're seeing. Yeah, we are seeing the fake-out, and it was into the Chiyu, so it could have been a Terra Ghost there, and the Bleakman Storm break the Shadow Shield, and the uh, Shadow Shield, that's Lunala, <laughs> Terra Shell, and then the Overheat follow-up into the uh, Terrapagos could have been a, a huge amount of damage. It's still going to break the Terra Shell mm. with that Bleakman Storm that is actually a little bit more accurate this time, still connecting with both Pokemon, but that is another Calm Mind coming out for that Terrapagos. Yeah, a little bit more accurate and also a little bit more powerful because of the Beats of Ruin, so you can really see that damage modification Fire, especially on the Incineroar. Yeah. Um, so all of a sudden, maybe Bleak Wind starts to Bleak Wind Storm starts to be a little bit more threatening. Now, of course, you don't want the Terrapagos to go out of hand once again. Um, and with presumably that uh, that comfy waiting for Alessio in the back, you also really need to plan your turns. When are you taking the KO on Incineroar? Um, how and when can you allow it to go for a parting shot? Because um, all the damage that you're doing to Terrapagos could just be gone in a heartbeat with one floor healing. Yeah, absolutely could. So you could see a protect and a parting shot, reduce the damage output, and then into the comfy, but then maybe you're able to KO the Incineroar with a, with a Bleakman Storm, help from the Beats of Ruin, and then maybe an Overheat as well. But yeah, you still need to find the damage into the Serapagos, and yep. you're not going to do it this turn if you're switching out the Chiyu. 
Yeah, uh, switching into the Amoongus, looks like Joseph once again wants to try to go for that plan with the Tailwind and the Spore. But as we were saying, Protect comes out on the Terrapagos, and if this is just a parting shot, and if there is that Ogre Pawn Wellspring waiting for Alessio, mm -hmm. I think this would be a prime opportunity to bring it in. Yeah, absolutely would be. So Fleetwind Storm does connect again with the Incineroar, brings it below half, so some very nice damage done to the Incineroar at this stage. But there is that parting shot, very safe with the Protect on the Terrapagos, bring in another supporting member. It was just parting shot into the Amoongus there, that's not going to care about it too much. Uh, could have been a bit more impactful if yep. it was into the Tornadus. Still going to be able to do some very good damage with the Bleak Wind Storms. So let's see, is the Ogre Pond Wellspring uh, the adaption that Alessio makes for this deciding game three? Uh, he's thinking about the choice, um, but it is the Dragapult. Yeah, okay. Dragapult. Yeah. Okay, Dragapult uh, joining the battle. Um, will, of course, outspeed the Amoongus. Uh, one, one funny play you could actually make is Thunder Wave your own Terrapagos mm, just yeah. to block the Spore. But I don't know if you want to play that game. That, that That's always an incredibly risky play. We've seen Sly will wisp so much, and then special attackers don't really care too much about that. They they will mind if they don't move a quarter yeah. of the time. So, Absolutely. yeah, yeah that's definitely still a play to consider. But you can still get some very good damage with the Dragapult. And then, like, you'll easily outspeed the uh, Amoongus, even if yep. the Tailwind is set. And still be able to do some good damage with the Calm-Minded Terrapagos now. Would eight uh, Dragon Darts into a, a Terra Star Storm at plus one be enough into the Amoongus? It's such a bulky mm. Pokemon. I, I'm not convinced it would be. Yeah, and you have to you have to consider um, once again this Trapagos uh, has a flamethrower or Terra Star Storm, two very powerful attacks. But first of all, Dragon Guard's just doing a little bit of chip to both opponents, um, and that Bleak Wind Storm coming out also hitting, but no chance to get a special. No, oh, oh, wow. Enough. Wow, so wow. No, no chance to get a speed drop with a Bleak Wind, but no, instead, the Terra Star Storm just getting the KO, and I don't think that this is something that Joseph has expected here. Yeah, that was a very clutch KO there, the Terra Star Storm, enough to pick up the Amoongus with the Dragon Dance. That must have been pretty close. So wow. I think we did see it and end up seeing the plus one Terra Star Storm into the Amoongus in the previous game, yep. and it brought it down to the red, so yeah, yeah. I, 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 in my head, that was with Beta Ruin's help, but apparently it wasn't. It was just strong enough to be able to pick up that KO. Uh, the Terra Star Storm would have done exactly the same damage as the Flamethrower because of the same type attack bonus. Uh, it was going to be able to match the super effective Flamethrower, so it didn't really matter which one was chosen there, uh, but Terra Star Storm would have been able to cover something like the Chi Yu switching in a bit nicer. Yep. Uh, Terrapagos is joining the field now at Forge the side of the field, really needs to turn on the offense. The yeah. Dragon Bolt's focus actually has actually been broken, so it would be able to pick up the KO of the Terra Star Storm if it uh, terrestrializes. Oh, yeah, I think you could go for like a Tailwind uh, this turn and then go for the Terra Star Storm mm -hmm. on, on Joseph's side. Of course, Terra Star Storm is such a powerful move. Um, of course, with the terrestrialization, that's what, what everyone knows, but also just using the small turtle, one might say, mm -hmm. just the regular Terrapagos uh, single target move also means there's no uh, damage reduction from being um, a, a multi uh, hit move. Yep. And um, yeah, now Joseph debating how fast is the Terrapagos. It should outspeed the Dragapult, right? With the Tailwind. You usually train the Terrapagos pretty fast on these kind of teams if you're going to be running the choice spec set. So yeah, uh, you don't need too much investment when you have a Terrapagos to be able to outspeed a Dragapult in Tailwind. Won't matter this turn though, because it's going to be switching out. With Cineral surely still in range of the Terra Star Storm as well though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might be, might be tough actually. I think last time we saw uh, Beats of Ruin. Um, mm -hmm. when it did a, a similar amount of health, but then, of course, it was enough for the knockout, so we don't know how much more it could have done. Um, but looks like, yeah, Joseph going for the offensive. If the Incineroar makes it through this turn, then next turn, of course, the fake out into the Terrapagos would slow down Joseph quite significantly. Um, so, yeah, Joseph really wants um, to get the knockout on the Incineroar this turn. Yeah, won't be getting the knockout on the Terrapagos unless his side of the field, though, is going to be protecting itself. Uh, whether that's going to be the Tailwind or the Bleakman Storm, it's just going to be the Tailwind here, getting that speed advantage immediately. So it is just going to be on this Terrapagos to be able to pick up the KO, but it wasn't into the Incineroar here. It's just going to be going for the Terra Star Storm. Going to be that spread. Uh, hopefully going to be enough to pick up the knockout. It's below half. It's taken a lot of good chip damage already. Let's see. Uh, it's going to be choice specs, and it, yeah, oh. it is going to be enough to pick up the KO. Yeah, enough for the KO here. Now Alessio has to really uh, think about what to do. Might have to bring out the last Pokemon, because yeah, Dragapult in this situation doesn't really help, and it is indeed that Comfy. So Comfy, we've seen it uh, do quite well in some of the previous um, battles. But uh, yeah, with Tornadus, of course, being next to Terrapagos, even if the Comfy goes for the Floral Healing, brings back the Terrapagos to full health, um, resets uh, the Terra Shell, then Tornadus is moving first and would break it. 
Yeah, it would. So then you'd be able to do the just massive damage with the Terra Star Storm on Joseph's side of the field as well. So this is, seems like a pretty reasonable position here for Joseph. There is going to be the matching terrestrialization now coming out on Alessio's side of the field. Yep. Uh, it's going to be the Trapagos, so you want that extra HP to maybe be able to survive the attacks, uh, knowing that if you just take the Bleak Windstorm and Terra Star Storm, Terra Shell won't matter too much at that point. So yep. just going for the terrestrialization instead. And the floor healing will come out regardless because, yeah, uh, you're all in on the Terrapagos. It has to make it through this turn. So mm -hmm. every little bit of healing will be important here. Bleak Wind Star comes out, does connect with both. But, yeah, you can see just even without the Terra Shell, Terrapagos t uh, taking that very nicely. And now Terra Star Storm, how much is that going to do? Yeah, we still got a calm mind. So it's going to be able to assumingly survive that attack thanks to that special attack boost. Still doing mm. very good damage. Still super effective thanks to the both players going for the Terrestrialization. But yep. Comfey surviving as well. That means more healing available for the Trapagos. Yeah, absolutely crucial for Alessio because now his own Terra Star Storm can come out, boost it as well, and this will do a ton of damage to both. Yeah, absolutely massive damage. Super effective into the opposed oh. Trapagos, but survival's all around on all Pokemon here. Uh, the Tornadus and the Trapagos on Joe's side, surviving in the red. Mm. But now they're in range of Draining Kiss as well. Yeah, they, they would be in range of Draining Kiss. Now, I wonder, like, the, the Tornadus definitely is in range, but I wonder if the Trapagos is in range yeah, as well. Yeah, that's, that's, that's close. Uh, that, that could be quite close. Now, you could, of course, go for, once again, go for the Floral Healing, um, but then... Yeah, you would have to take the exact same combination of moves once again, and I don't know if that's something that you would want to do. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. So Tornadus is switching out here. That means the Chi Yu switching in. That also means the Beads of Ruins active. Yep. That that's a boost to the Draining Kiss. So if the Draining Kiss does target that down that Trapagos, that might have been oh, the extra boost does. to need it. And, and it's it enough. is enough. Wow. Comfey going on the offense and taking down that Trapagos. Very nicely done. It would have been so close if that was enough to pick up the knockout without the Beads of Ruin. But with that Beads of Ruin, that's definitely going to put it in range. Yeah, well played by that Comfy. And then here's the follow-up, the Terra Star Storm coming out from Terrapagos. Single target into the Chiyu, of course. Uh, it will not be enough for the knockout because there's the Focus Sash. But yeah, now that's just another Pokemon that will go on, Chi Yu, uh, on Comfy's plate. I have to feel uh, Comfy. We were talking about it <laughs> as this, like, supportive Pokemon, it can do the healing, maybe it sets up the trick. Oh, no, Comfy is here to take KOs, use Draining Kiss, um, and Joseph knows that it is over, and Alessio wins. Very nicely done there from Alessio. Who would have thought that Comfey would be turning on the offense and picking up the KOs there? Uh, the forfeit just meaning that Comfey doesn't get a few more KOs, but with Stellar type move, and then the ghost types will be taking damage from that. But let's see it all unfold before our very eyes, trainers, as the Calyrex hits the field immediately alongside the Thunderous. And here comes Terrapagos and Incineroar, so it's restricted for restricted. Yeah, it's a really nice lead, especially for Adam, because you, you look at Antonio's side with that Incineroar, it's got Intimidation. It's not really going to affect anything on Adam's side of the field because primarily special attackers, but it has got that active fake out. Not going to be effective against the ghost typing, it's immunity on the Calyrex. And then you look at the item on that Thunderous and it has got the cover cloak. So going to have the immunity there. It's free to go for potentially a taunt into that Terrapagos if it wants to, or an eerie impulse. The taunt's there, it's nice. It's going to be able to shut down, stop that calm mind. So the Terrapagos can't get set up on Antonio's side of the field. It makes it difficult to kind of get any momentum swing there while it leaves you in the, the, the safe space, potentially to terrestrialize with your Calyrex, get a nasty plot up and set up for yourself going forward in the match. Yeah, you sometimes see Ice Beam being run on Trapagos, but not this one. So that Thunderous is only taking super effective damage from Rock and Ice, but the Trapagos not threatening so much on the super effective side here. Calyrex deciding it's time to get Incineroar into the ring, and now they're facing down each other in this wrestling match between these two fantastic trainers. Thunderbolt coming straight down into the Incineroar over on Antonio's side, leaving the Trapagos free to clear its head and get that boost to its special attack and special defense. Yeah, really good turn here from Antonio saying, well, I know you do have the taunt. I do know you've got the eerie impulse, but if you don't target into me this turn, then I'm, I'm going to punish you for that. You do have to be careful, of course, still around that eerie impulse. It can come out at any point. But now that cover clock has been knocked off, if you can cycle in something like the Rillaboom that we're going to see now, or even the Incineroar later on in the battle, it is going to be susceptible to those fake outs. And 
and that further supports the Trapagos, maybe giving it room now. It has got that boost under its belt to be able to fire off those Terra Star Storms. You do on Adam's side of the field as well have the Incinero coming in, does have the active fake out, but for Antonio, it's a pretty easy protect here. Cycle in something like the Rillaboom this turn, like we're going to see. Exactly, because those eerie impulses will be going off immediately thanks to Thunderous's prankster ability, giving status moves that priority. But as it is, Rillaboom is joining the fray, and we're going to take a walk through the park on that grassy terrain. As Traficos does indeed keep itself safe, retreat into its shell to protect here, as Eerie Impulse was indeed targeting down at that slot. But all eyes now onto this Incineroar. Has he called perhaps a switch into the Rillaboom? Well, it's going to be that parting shot. So Adam's going to be recycling that Intimidate, coming back to its trainer in favor of something lurking in the back. Yeah, and it's a nice way for Adam to reposition, maybe get something out that we haven't seen already that he's got on the back, or maybe even just bring that Caloric Shadow Rider back onto the field to stop pressuring down that Rillaboom if it does decide to go for that fake out the next turn. The problem is, is the Serapagos already has that Calm Mind under its belt, so it is going to be hitting a lot harder than it would originally. And have you got the tools to be able to, one, break that Terra Shell quickly and then be able to pick up the knockout? I don't feel between the Thunderous and the Calyrex, it's the right typing combination move-wise that you've got to be able to remove that threat pretty quickly. Antonio playing this extremely well in the early game and making it difficult for Adam to kind of get any sort of momentum here with the tools that he's brought to the battle. Yeah, well, Adam's going to have to find a way to break through that Serapagos sooner or later as his own Rillaboom joins the field and now you've got the mind games of which Rillaboom is going to be faster do you fake out the Rillaboom on Antonio's side so you can't fake out the Thunderous enabling Terrapagos to get a big Carmine boosted Terra Star Storm off or indeed Earth Power but probably not into these targets or are you just going to play, play the mind game exactly and switch out that Thunderous and get something else in here's Incineroar which is going to neutralize that Rillaboom's attack even further yeah you can see what Adam's trying to do here preserving that Thunderous for later so there's a preferred situation where he's got it on the field and he can actually utilize that eerie impulse without the threat of a fake out on the field and taking a lot of unnecessary damage we are seeing the fake out into that incineral terra star storm into that incineral as well soaking it up pretty well and this pivot here is beautiful because it allows adam like we say to get that rillaboom off the field preserve it for later on preserve that fake out and then bring in that Thunderous now, it hasn't got the fake out in front of it, and it is in a prime position to try and get that Eerie Impulse onto the Terrapagos, kind of keep it in check because you don't want to allow it to get those too many calm minds up. But we're not seeing the Thunderous, it is actually the Calyrex Shadow Rider. It is going to be Calyrex, and the, ter the Astral Barrage isn't going to be doing anything into the Terrapagos, being a normal type. Draining Kiss could do, and it does have access to Nasty Plot too, so you can be boosting up your uh, offensive prowess right now if uh, Antonio gives Adam that luxury in order to do that. And now, uh, Adam pivoting around so well, this is something we've been seeing so often in regulation set G. You've got to get your restricted Pokemon in the right place at the right time. And that's something that uh, this Terrapagos is slowly being stalled out of doing, but it's both this match is very much still in the balance. It could go either way. It's still very early days. We do see Antonio switch out the Rillaboom for that Incineroar. It is going to drop an all-important Intimidate onto the Incineroar on Adam's side of the field, not so much onto the Calyrex, but we are going to see a terrestrialization, Charlie, and it looks like it's going to be onto that Terrapagos. Terrapagos is going to go on top of the world right now, feeling good about its place in this battle. It's time to dish out that stellar boosted Terra Star Storm that is going to be hitting the Calyrex because it's no longer a normal type move. It's going to be removing the grassy terrain from the field thanks to that Terraform Zero ability, but the fake out instead is just going to make it flinch, buying this Calyrex a turn to do some setting up of its own, having that light bulb moment going for a nasty plot but it is facing down at this incineral which has access to the knockoff which is going to be super effective into that calyrex unless adam decides to terrestrialize yeah it almost forces the terrestrialization as long as that incineral is out on the field as well and now the active fake outs there there is the play where Antonio could maybe say, well, you're almost forced to go for the Trastalization here, so I could potentially fake out into that slot. And if you do Trastalize, commit to it, I'm going to get even more damage with my Terra Star Storm this next turn. So it's a, it's a bit of a mind game here. We are going to see Adam just adjust, take the Incinera off the field, bring out that in the Rillaboom once again and set up the grassy terrain for another five turns. And another fake out present on the field. Terraform Zero, of course, only activates on the turn that the Trastalization happens. So so Antonio would have to switch it out and back in in order, or uh, the, the Rillaboom is now in setting up that grassy terrain. The Terra Star Storm is going to be connecting down into the Rillaboom, holding the Assault Vest, so it's going to be taking special attacks a little bit better than it would have done otherwise. Let's see how much damage this does.
stars, of course, the spread move, so not as much damage. Rillaboom with about 60% of its health there, as Knockoff was indeed going into that Calyrex that would have been doubly super effective. Yeah, it's a really nice play there from Antonio, just kind of keeping the pressure on. Um, <laughs> The one problem is now that you, if you are Antonio, you have to worry about this potential fake out from the Rillaboom because now your Trapagos is in a little bit of an awkward situation and it could open the door for Adam to go for another nasty plot with the, the Calyrex and get yourself to plus four. Not seeing that fake out just into the instant roll. Yeah, it's going to be a nasty plot over on Adam's side of the field. So this horse is really looking threatening with his Grim Nay ability, but a Calm Mind coming out as well. So both of these Pokemon just trying to bolster their damage output, and in the case of Terrapagos, its defensive uh, capabilities as well. It wants to be in the best possible position to try and secure this game. You can't leave either of these Pokemon unchecked right now. No, you can't, but you've got to think that Antonio's Incineroar is probably uh, at risk of maybe getting knocked out by the Draining Kiss now. The plus for yeah. that the Calyrex is on. Um, it will probably be enough to take down that one pivot option. And once that's gone, you don't have that kind of rotating door between that and the Rillaboom where you can protect, bring the opposite one in, fake out, utilize the Calm Mind, or an attack and move to wear down things on Adam's side of the field. So Adam really trying to react, pile the pressure back on from his side of things, and he's doing a very good job at it. I think the one thing you have to worry about if you're Adam, you really want to terrestrialize, but at the same time, if you do, you're going to take a lot more damage. Yeah, a lot more damage from the Terra Star Storm, which does hit any terrestrialized target. Super effective. That Astral Barrage, more than enough to pick up the knockout onto the Incineroar, and of course, it covers for a switch that Antonio might make, but now this Calyrex is at plus five. Grim Nay boosting its special attack anytime it claims a knockout. Here comes a Terra Star Storm, though, coming out from Antonio's Terrapagos. How much damage is it going to secure? The Rillaboom just hanging on there as well, as we predicted from the previous turn. And the Calyrex getting opportunity to have its Citrus Berry there. A Pokemon that loves the harvest so very much, and now being able to snack on one of its Citrus Berries as the U-turn, a little bit of chip damage into the Terrapagos. Yeah, it's a nice play here from Adam, really, you know, taking advantage, not going for the, the Astral Barrage, not going to do damage to the Terrapagos, but knowing because of the, the higher damage output that that move's got, the same type of attack bonus, it's going to be enough to pick up that Incineroar, which is the main thing. Not wanting to get kind of greedy or overcompensate or risk the Draining Kiss missing the knockout there, because that would have been very detrimental, like you've mentioned with the knockoff. Could have really meant the end of the game for Adam. So a nice play here. Still got to really work out how to deal with this Trapagos. It is plus two, both its special attack and special defense. And it is going to be still throwing out big damage every turn. So it's not something that you've got a lot of time to deal with. But with Incineroar, of course, coming onto the field, you do have the fake out. But at the same time, you need to worry about the fake out from the Rillaboom that would be probably faster than your Incineroars in this situation, kind of making the Incineroar a target that probably will go down if we see the fake out and then the double up with that Terra Star Storm. Yeah, and the Trapagos is pretty, well, I mean, if that Calyrex were to go for a Draining Kiss, be fascinated to see how much damage that does, given the Trapagos are now at plus two of its special defense, the Calyrex at uh, plus five of its special attack <laughs> right now. So the damage calculations are all over the place, and this is something that trainers have to be so on top of in regulation set G. Every single stat stage, how much damage is that doing to me or to my opponent? Because it really does all add up and can cut, define how the match goes for you. Fake Out is going to be going first into the Incineroar here. Here comes the Draining Cliffs into the Rillaboom. Oh, it takes it really well thanks to the Assault Vest that it's holding. A little bit of recovery. Now all eyes onto this Terra Star Storm coming out from the Terrapagos. Calyrex back up to full HP. Likely to bring the Calyrex down to about a third of its health. A half to a third going into the Incineroar. Of course, enough for the knockout there. And yes, that Calyrex has already had its Citrus Berry. There's no more recovery it can go for apart from this grassy terrain. Yeah, it's a really not a bad situation either for Adam because that fake out now from the Rillaboom on Antonio your side has been burnt right now. This is a perfect time to bring in your Thunderous. You've got access to that Eerie Impulse now. Now the Draining Kiss as well is going to pick up the knockout onto the Rillaboom and depending on what Antonio has in the back, you probably don't want to switch the Rillaboom out to bring anything in to take a Draining Kiss because with a plus five Calyrex on the other side of the field, it's probably going to be enough to two hit or even one hit kill, whatever comes in. So really nice position where Adam is able to reduce the attack power on that Terrapagos and maybe even force Antonio into a situation where you do switch out the Rillaboom to bring it back in to have that fake out active a little bit later, but doing that maybe 
not an option. We do see that eerie impulse, though. There it is, eerie impulse. That Tarapagos now down to neutral special attack, although special defense is still good. There's a draining kiss. Critical hit did not matter there. And recovering that Calyrex, a really decent amount here. This is what recovery moves enable you to do, enable you to dish out massive damage as well as stick around on the field for longer than you might ordinarily. And now this Calyrex is at plus six. It cannot get any more offensive than this. And of course, the Terra Star Storm isn't going to be hitting for as much damage right now. Spread type move into both the Calyrex oh. and the Thunderous. It's still really good damage, uh, but it looks like thanks to the terrain recovery and thanks to the threat of Eerie Impulse in the field that the Calyrex is going to be sticking around, although this Urshifu is coming in with the Choice Scarf. The problem is, though, with the Urshifu coming in, it does have that Choice Scarf, so initially yeah. it would be faster. But the one thing that you can say is that that Thunderous uh, it's, it's not really got a way to slow it down. That's the big problem. So the, the Urshifu in a nice position where both these Pokemon are in a knockout range from a Surging Strikes. You can go for another Eerie Impulse. Last ditch one with that Prankster ability into the Trapagos. Maybe even switch out your Calyrex, but it's plus six at the moment. You really want to try and make as much use out of it as possible. But you do have the Rillaboom in the back. It can come in, and it's an easy answer way to deal with that Urshifu. So that's something that Adam's got to try and maneuver here. Get that Rillaboom onto the field. Um, and, and potentially try and get some use out of this Calyrex while you can, or you take the decision and say, it's plus six, it's not really in any use now, could tr switch it out, but not seeing that. No, Surging Strikes connecting down into the Calyrex. Of course, had that Calyrex switched out, it would have sacrificed all of those boosts it received. So Adam deciding to grin and bear it, and that is going to be the Calyrex going down right now. So Adam just down to the Thunderous and the Rillaboom here. Thunderous still threatening Eerie Impulses down onto the field. Uh, it is two for two right now. Thunderbolt, super effective into the Urshfu. That's going to be enough for the one-hit knockout. So it is now Terrafagos versus Rillaboom and the Thunderous. Yeah, this is, well, the Thunderous now will go down to the Terra yes. Star Storm. Single target attack. It didn't do much last turn, but probably enough to take it down here as we do see Antonio tie up this match. Like you say, the Rillaboom coming in, and it is one-on-one -on -one with the Terrafagos. The one thing, though, that you see this Terrafagos has in its bag is that it is going to be able to utilize that Calm Mind and probably is going to be able to take a flurry of attacks from the, the Rillaboom. The Rillaboom's got fake out, but you've got to take down a full health Terrapagos. I just don't feel like the Rillaboom's got the offensive presence to be able to do that, while the Terrapagos is probably able just to sit and launch the Terra Star Storms to pick up the remaining damage that's already been done to it. Antonio going for not the Protect here, just in case there wasn't a fake out coming out, but yes, the uphill struggle is certainly too mighty for this Rillaboom right now. Terrapagos now threatening massive damage, and the Rillaboom hardly in the healthiest of positions. So it was a game that was sort of seesawing either way, but it was Antonio coming out on top in the end with no less a full health to Rapagos up his sleeve. So heading into this next game, Adam has some thinking to do. Yeah, I think a lot of thinking to do because the way that Antonio's piloting both the Rillaboom and the Incinera, if it had connected once terrestrialized. Yeah, exactly. Type matchups are a whole different ball game when Stella's in the mix. Yes, Fairy type only takes super effective damage from poison and steel, but when it's terrestrialized, of course, into uh, whatever type, it's going to be taking super effective damage from a Stella type move. But we've got the leads, and it's going to be some switching up here. Thunderous and Incineroar coming out for Adam, and it's going to be Incineroar and Rillaboom for Antonio. Yeah, I think the big thing here, we've already really talked about it between the matches, is Adam needs to make sure that that Thunderous is not taking a knockoff here, because if you lose that cover clock, both of these Pokemon that Antonio's led with throughout the battle, because we know they're probably likely to go for the parting shot, U-turn at some point are going to be able to really stop the Thunderous in its tracks. And Adam, like we've highlighted, has to make sure that that Thunderous is able to function when he needs it to, because if he can't function when he needs it to, it's no good bringing it to this battle. Knockoff is so safe here, because removing the item of any Pokemon would be really huge, and it looks like Adam is indeed going to try and preserve that Thunderous with Urshifu coming in instead. Dead. But, you know, knockoff, not very effective damage, but it is still going to be removing the item. Rillaboom, faster than Incineroar, getting that fake out beforehand. And instead, this Incineroar coming for a knockoff into that Earth, who's still really good damage there. And crucially, with a critical hit to boot, that Choice Scarf has been lost. So Urshifu looking a little less stylish, perhaps, on the field. It does mean that Adam can switch out the moves that Urshifu goes for, even without switching out the Pokemon. Yeah, it, it is good. But at the same time, you brought in the, the Urshifu, you've lost a really valuable item that it holds, it gives it a lot of freedom in this match, and you're in front of a Rillaboom that is threatening you right now. Also, do you want to terrestrialize at this stage? Water terrestrialization puts you at threat. 
Uh, so we are seeing Adam just keep it for later on in this match and the Thunder is coming back onto the field. Question is, has Antonio called it and just gone for knockoff to lock down that slot? Woodhammer, good for a little bit of chip here as Rillaboom takes that recoil from that heavy, heavy Woodhammer coming down. Knockoff is going to be giving Antonio's and Sonora a taste of his own medicine, removing the safety goggles, but there it is, knockoff into that Thunderous and the Cobra Cloak is gone. Yeah, and that is a huge couple of turns here from Antonio leading out with what isn't the most uh, aggressive of leads. It's quite a passive lead, a bit of a supportive lead, but something that's giving Adam a lot of issues here because we saw he had to switch out the Thunderous turn one not to have the fake out knockoff into that slot, but then you're bringing in the only Pokemon that would be good in that situation to take maybe a, a, a knockoff and a fake out in the Urshifu. And then the next turn when it was out on the field is pressured by the Rillaboom. Antonio doing a really good job to really pin down Adam here and do the things that he needs to do at the start of the game to make the end game a lot more beneficial for him. And you definitely don't want to switch in a Calyrex Shadow Rider to a knockoff as Thunderbolt will be chipping away at the Incineroar. Another Woodhammer, not enough for the KO here. But again, it's really good damage into whatever might be switching in. will though, is going to connect onto Antonio's Rillaboom. So being burned, that's going to be halving the offensive output of any physical moves that Rillaboom could be choosing to go for. Could be big later on in the game as knockoff <laughs> going to be coming out into Adam's own Incineroar there. Items just littering the field right now, Leah. I think we need to get some rubbish collectors right there on the field in Paldea. Yeah, we definitely do. But it's really at the detriment of Adam here because he's losing these items that are so critical for his kind of game plan against in particular something like this right because it could set up and we haven't even seen it yet you know and the really boom has been burned it's not going to be doing as much damage but another wood hammer that thunderous is in uh, 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 low enough health where it is going to get knocked out and you can't switch in the Urshifu to that slot because even burnt you're still going to probably get knocked out with the grassy terrain and then the Calyrex you want to bring in as healthy as possible so the only option that Adam has here is to go for that Thunderbolt attack and try and get some last ditch damage off before it goes down. Yeah the one thing that you're going to want to remove if you have to choose just one over on Antonio's side of the field is that Incineroar because it's so threatening to the Calyrex that Adam presumably has in the back. It's mind games of course might not be but you'd assume in the single restricted format that is the Pokemon uh, in the fourth slot on Adam's team. As the Incineroar dropping the offensive prowess of Antonio's own, enabled to switch to the back right now. Urshifu rejoining the fray without its choice scarf here, very threatened by the Rillaboom, and Antonio's really been locking down Adam's side of the field as Urshifu comes into a very unwelcome welcome with that parting shot lowering its attack stat. Yeah, and you can see the benefit of having the slower Incineroar as well from Antonio because yes, Adam is able to reposition, get the Incineroar off the field, utilize the parting shot, but because Antonio's is slower, it can go second after the, the parting shots initially when, and then you can adjust what you bring in based on what your opponents brought in onto the field. Now, it's an easy one for Tarapagos to come in because you've got the Rillaboom covering the Urshifu. Adam's hand here almost forced to bring back in that Incineroar and that prevents him from getting that restricted onto the field and starting to get set up. So that is the big problem. What Antonio needs to deal with now, he's still got the Intimidate in the back. He can bring in, drop the attack of that Urshifu, which is pivotal for that close combat that could come in and be a big threat to that Tarapagos. It's going to be Calares joining the field in Instead, now this could of course be a bait. You uh, get, you hope that Antonio is going to target that slot, but then you switch in the Incineroar, and it takes much less damage than the Calyrex would have. You've got the Urshifu on the field, and of course you cannot protect in front of the moves that Urshifu can go for, thanks to its ability there. So it is threatening super effective damage down on Antonio's Terrapagos. Its Terra Shell ability right now would be meaning it takes not very effective damage at full health, but once you Terrasalize, you lose the Terra Shell ability, so it would be taking super effective damage then. So. Mind games are plenty on the field right now. Antonio certainly has the advantage, but you know, where there's a Calyrex that can get so easily boosted up, there's certainly a nay. There is, and this feels like an opportunity for Adam to maybe try and get a nasty plot up if it can. We are going to see the adjustment here, the Incineroar coming in, dropping an all-important Intimidate down onto that Urshifu, reducing the attack stat by one stage. Of course, it won't affect the Surging Strikes if that is opted for from Adam, because it's always guaranteed to be a critical hit. And we are seeing Antonio go for that stellar terrestrialization on the Terrapagos. And will it be launching an attack or will it be boosting up? 
Well, <laughs> either is not going to be good news for Adam right now. Grassy terrain disappearing thanks to Terraform Zero. Now trying to get that Calyrex set up so it can threaten back against Antonio's own bulky Terrapagos. You turn a little bit of chip down into Incineroar in order to pivot Adam's own Incineroar back in and drop the attack of the Incineroar on Antonio's side. Pokemon that's been very popular here in day one, but dropping off in popularity uh, so far in regulation set G. But you wouldn't have thought it looking at this particular particular game and indeed the matches we've featured so far. Here comes a big Terra Star Storm. It's not boosted by any Calm Minds yet, but it's still going to be chipping away at these Pokemon. It's a big, big hit, but not quite enough to have an impact just yet. The one thing that you would say now Adam has it is advantage of having that faster Incineroar. He is going to be able to utilize the fake out right here, right now, because the Incineroar on Antonio's side is definitely slow, and that's why we're seeing it switch out. Probably Rillaboom coming in, and maybe that Terrapagos just protects for a turn, but it could open the door for another nasty plot on that Calyrex. Yeah, it certainly could, and these are the mind games that you're dealing with here. Do you attack? Do you set up in order to do more damage on future turns? Fake out coming out into the Terrapagos. Draining Kiss instead just going off straight away into the Rillaboom, holding the Assault Vesto, taking that really, really Really well, despite that Calyrex being at plus two in its special attack stat there. So a little turn bought for Adam here, but now heading into the next turn, you know, another Terra Star Storm it could be very safe here indeed. You can also boost up with the Calm Mind. Antonio seems to have a good number of options. Yeah, I think the Calm Mind here is a pretty nice option where you are able to, to get one off pretty safely at this stage. The Calyrex as well, I think, was almost forced to go for the Draining Kiss that last turn. And just in case Antonio kept the Incineroar in and then the knockoff was threatened because, again, the terrestrialization from the Calyrex, which is what you really want to be going for for Adam, is going to be at your own detriment because you're taking more damage, like we've mentioned countless times from that Terra Star Storm. So it is a very difficult situation. And with even a plus two nasty plot, you're not doing the damage you really want to be doing to things like the Rillaboom that can come in from Antonio's side with that Assault Fest. You're going to be able to take that extremely well. And now the active fake out's there. It's going to be able to prevent the Incinero from doing anything this turn. And that Terrapagos, like we've said, can go for a Calm Mind, can go for a, a Terra Star Storm, get some additional damage off. We'll wait and see what happens. Doesn't matter if you're burned, if you're just going for a fake out, buying that turn is absolutely crucial. Here comes the Astral Barrage firing down into the Rillaboom. Is it going to be enough for the knockout? Secure a boost for the Calyrex? Yes, it certainly is. So this Calyrex is now, thanks to its Grimney ability, going to be at plus three in its special attack. And slowly but surely, it's going to be threatening a lot more damage onto the Trapagos with a Draining Kiss. Hence, we see a Calm Mind coming out from Antonio's Trapagos here, boosting its special defenses being able to take a Draining Kiss much better later on in the game. We've got to bear in mind as well, Adam has still not terrestrialized yet, so just waiting for that Calyrex to be able to go all in with that Fairy Terror big Draining Kiss. Yeah, and I think that's what you really want to happen because it, also as well, once you do terrestrialize, you not only become a little bit more susceptible to the Terra Star Storm, you become susceptible to these fake outs. So I think one thing that Adam probably would like to do is remove the fake outs from the field, it being an option, and then you can really utilize the Calyrex, maybe try and get a few more boosts under your belt towards five, towards six, to get the damage that you really require, and hope that you're able to kind of keep the Terrapagos in check enough, because if it gets another Calm Mind off that's sitting on plus two, that's gonna be hitting a lot harder, and that's one thing that Adam really wants to try and prevent going forward. Calyrex's loyal steed, and alongside it's a little cat doing its dirty work on the field right now. <laughs> That's going to be the Incineroar going down, and another Grimnay boost. So the Calyrex now at plus four in its special attack. Terra Star Storm coming out, no Terra coming out from the Calyrex, so not taking super effective damage here, but it is certainly taking that Terra Star Storm thanks to that being a stellar type move now. Incineroar down, incredibly low, and Adam has to be thinking about dealing out some damage with this Calyrex soon before the entire team is swept away. Yeah, and it's going to be very difficult because you look at Antonio's last Pokemon, it is that Urshifu with the Choice Golf. Once again, you've got to say that Calyrex is probably in a range from a Surging Strikes. And if it does go down, then that's kind of the end of the game for Adam. He's got to hope that he is able to take maybe a Surging Strikes, return with a Draining Kiss, get that health recovery there, and then be able to kind of get maybe a parting shot or just allow the Incineroar to go down to get your own Urshifu onto the field and then be able to deal with that Terrapagos a little bit safer. Let's hope that this Spectray doesn't mind rough terrain because it's certainly got an uphill struggle in front of it. It is going to be hanging on for Calyrex right now. 
Is the Calares going to be able to move, though? Yes, Draining Kiss going to be very super effective into the Urshifu and recover a good deal of health here. So it could well, yeah, definitely taking another Terra Star Storm after that one-hit KO. This Terrapagos dealing big damage right now, and it is just a Terrapagos left on the field as the Calyrex. We now at plus five, perhaps, in the special attack there. Terra Star Storm raining down once more from the sky on these two Pokemon. That's going to be the Incineroar going down. The Calyrex still hanging around. You can see how huge that Draining Kiss move can be. The momentum swing here from Adam is incredible. He has just been able to take down all of the partnering Pokemon, essentially kind of ignoring the, the Terrapagos a lot of the time and dealing with everything that's beside the Terrapagos because once you can do that, you can see how pivotal that Citrus Berry recovery was to take the Surging Strikes, able to get a lot of health recovery and now position where you've got your Urshifu out in the field. It threatens with the close combat. That in combination with a Draining Kiss will likely be enough to end this Terrapagos once and for all. And we are finally seeing the terrestrialization from Adam's side of the field. You've got to choose your moments and this is certainly the one for Shadow Rider Calyrex. It's getting that Fairy Terror. It's going to be dishing out even more damage with that Draining Kiss. Incredibly powerful move coming out that's going to be enabling it to recover some HP as well. Connecting down into the Terrapagos. How much damage is it going to do? Okay, about half, but then you've got this Urshifu ready to follow up. And if uh, Terra Star Storm, given that Urshifu's Choice Scarf has been knocked off, but the Urshifu is, of course, a faster Pokemon than the Terrapagos. Slow and steady doesn't win the race right now. The Tortoise and the Hare, and it's going to be the Hare coming out on top. It's an incredible comeback from Adam. What looked like a very bleak situation after the first player. You're the one having to adjust from the last game to secure the win in the next one. Yeah, well, it's going to be Adam deciding that not leading the Restricted was a good game plan. Going with Thunderous and Incineroar, and there's Incineroar and the Rillaboom coming out for Antonio here. So you've got Fake Out, Mind Games are plenty right now. Who's going to be going first? You would be able to lock down that Incineroar over on Adam's side of the field, as we've seen time and time again in this fascinating set. The Thunderous there, not dishing, not threatening the eerie impulses that it's so threatening onto Antonio's side of the field. But again, as you've been saying, Lee, you've got to protect it from a knockoff that could be coming out into that slot. Yeah, and at this stage, I think if you are Adam, do you just say, I'm going to allow you to knock off and I'm just going to get some good damage with the Thunderbolt onto maybe the Incineroar here and try and take advantage of having my own Incineroar with that Will-O-Wisp and get the Will-O-Wisp into the Rillaboom because if you do that, then the Urshifu's life becomes a lot easier later on in this match, which is a really pivotal option for Adam. We're going to see the fake out into the Incineroar here. No Will-O-Wisp coming out this turn. Thunderbolt just coming out from the Thunderous and it is going to flinch the Incineroar on Adam's side of the field. Yeah, you called it, Lee. That is knockoff coming down into the Thunderous. Adam pre preferring the damage from the Thunderbolt coming out onto Antonio's own Incineroar. So it is now vulnerable to flinching. But again, perhaps Adam just wants to pave the way for that Calyrex in the back by getting rid of Antonio's Incineroar here. Yeah, and I think this is a smart play from Adam. Don't shuffle around your Pokemon if you yeah. don't necessarily need to. Keep that Incineroar on the field and go for that Will-O-Wisp into the Rillaboom this next turn because you know the key to winning this match. You know the things that you've got to do. You've got to get the Calyrex in, you've got to get it boosted up slightly, and you've got to get that Urshifu into a preferable position where the Rillaboom's not in contention. Well, Thunderbolt connecting once more onto the Incineroar. Looks like it won't be able to take another one of those. Woodhammer, good for a little bit of chip down into the Thunderous. Again, Eerie Impulse would be very annoying for the Trapagos that's presumably in the back here. Parting Shot is going to be doing significant work to reduce the offensive output of the Incineroar on Antonio's side. But of course, Calyrex does take double super effective damage from Dark type moves. So could still be forcing out his terrestrialization if it were that coming in, or perhaps Adam going to be playing it a little bit slower, keeping it safe in the back, and Ashifu is indeed going to be joining the field. Antonio's own Incineroar does indeed have access to the Will-O-Wisp here, so would still be threatening, could still get that merry-go-round revolving door of Will-O-Wisp slash knockoff pressure going down into the opposing side. Yeah, and Adam's in the perfect situation now, I think, where you do directly switch out of there, Ashifu. You don't want to contend taking something like a grassy glide here from the opposing Rillaboom, and at the same time, you drop another Intimidate onto both of these physical attackers on that side of the field. At the same time, Antonio's got the option now in a, a more comfortable position. On the Rillaboom, such a threat. The Urshifu likely to switch out. It allows you to maybe adjust your board position slightly as well. The Incineroar is getting closer to being knocked out from these Thunderbolts, of course. It certainly is, but Thunderous isn't going to want to be dishing out any more Thunderbolts right now. It's going to retreat in favor of Incineroar prowling once more into the ring in the face of these two physical attackers, dropping that attack stat thanks to its 
Intimidate ability. Antonio going to be playing Adam at their own game right now and coming in from the back. Here comes Screamtail. A little bit of a switch up from that previous game. Instead of the Urshvu, here is that past Paradox Jigglypuff getting a little boost thanks to Protosynthesis from to its speed. Yeah, and we are going to see the U-turn just come out from the Urshvu, not one to get any attacks off. Preserve that Pokemon for later on in this match and a really smart option because the Screamtail would immediately pressure the knockout with potentially a Dazzling Gleam this next turn. So getting it out of harm's way, the right thing to do as we see the Calyrex make its way onto the field. That has one ability activating as always uh, with that unnerved. So if anything's got any of those berries going forward, they're not going to be able to actually use them. We do see the U-turn as well come out from the Rillaboom into that Incineroar. It is going to adjust and is this time for the Terrapagos to come back onto the field. Now you've got your two fake out Pokemon in the back. Essentially, if you are Antonio, you do lose that booster energy, um, but you do have the utility to allow those fake out Pokemon to come back onto the field pressure and allow those calm minds to be set up. The other thing you've got to worry about now is the Screamtail. It has access to that Encore and Disable yeah. combination, which you really have to be careful of if you're Adam and trying to go for like nasty plot or something like that, because you don't want that being on court. You don't want to get any of your attacks disabled either, so you have to be very careful in front of this Screamtail. You also have to be careful if you are Antonio, because of course the Screamtail will be taking super effective damage from the Astral Barrage. Dazzling Gleam is just going to be chipping away at the Pokemon on Adam's side, leaving the Calyrex really free to go for a nasty plot, brewing some kind of scheme that's going to affect later on in the game. Carmine coming out from Antonio. So often we've seen both of these trainers go for their setup moves on the same turn, and it's it's just going to be which of these trainers is going to be able to eke out that enough of the gas that they've got storing up in the tank. Yeah, and now the, the Calyrex in that awkward position where it is susceptible to an encore, and that's what Adam needs to be careful of. We are seeing an adjustment straight away here with the Incineroar leaving the field. The Thunderous coming back onto the field because it has access to the Taunt. It is risky, though, because if you lose that Thunderous this turn, um, sorry, if you, um, the, the parting shot, uh, so that's why, but you've got the, the, the taunt out now, it's a perfect turn from Adam, I should have just there, uh, be able now to launch it onto the scream tail, prevent the encore, prevent the disable potentially coming out, and the Calyrex is in a position where it can potentially pick up the knockout onto that Pokemon, but we are just seeing a protect. Scouting out to see if Thunderous is indeed aiming to taunt that Screamtail. Eerie Impulse instead coming out onto the Trapagos. This is the thing, Thunderous threatens so much utility onto the field right now. It's very hard to call. What's certainly not hard to call is the fact that this Calyrex is incredibly spooky on its ghostly steed right now with that plus four in its battle attack. Terra Star Storm still going to be enough to secure the knockout onto the Thunderous despite being at minus one special attack there. But that is potentially an opening that Antonio needs. Yeah, and what Adam's got the ability to do now is bring this Incineroar back onto the field. It's got active fake out. So, you know, the, the, the Scream Tail will be for one turn kind of susceptible to that. You're not going to be able to encore these nasty plots. And Adam doing a fantastic job to be able to utilize the nasty plot in such a way. The Eerie Impulse as well, really smart to lower that special attack on the Terrapagos, seeing it minus one special attack now, not going to be as uh, consequential in this match. I think maybe something that Antonio has to look at and say, do I switch out here or do I allow my scream tail to go down? Because you can't protect now. You've got to make an adjustment. Does the Incineroar come in on that slot? And if you go for that, then potentially a Draining Kiss could come into that that position with a fake out and get some big damage if not pick up a knockout. Yeah, and the Screamtail has Terra Grass, so you can't go for a Terra Ghost in order to get around a fake out there, which would be okay because you'd be encoring the Calyrex into a nasty plot. But no, Adam pivoting around perfectly right now. It is going to be the Terra onto the Screamtail. It is going to be going for that Terra Grass. Antonio recognizing that probably Screamtail will be taking an Astral Barrage here and doesn't want to be taking super effective damage from it as a result. Fake Out is connecting down onto the Screamtail and now all eyes onto this Shadow Rider Calyrex. It's been rising up through the hierarchy of its kingdom and now it's time for it to dish out this huge Astral Barrage. Trapagos not taking any damage. Oh. It's still enough for not quite the one hit knockout onto the Screamtail. And that is the terrestrialization option gone for Antonio. Huge turn.
Massive turn here for Adam because not only does the scream tail go down, but Antonio loses the ability to go for the trasalization with the Terrapagos yeah, now. Yeah. So free to go for the trasalization with your Color X in this situation where you know, okay, well, you can't go for the Terra Star Storms yeah. now because you know I'm I'm going to be a lot more comfortable going forward in this match. Of course, now the Rillaboom coming in and getting that grassy terrain onto the field, we do see another combine gone for with the Terrapagos. So it will be up to neutral special attack plus two special defense. It is keeping itself in the game, going to be able to kind of take these big special attacks from the, uh, well, the draining cases primarily from the Color X a little bit better, but Adam doing a lot better things in this match to make things as uncomfortable as possible for Antonio. Uncomfortable is certainly the word right now, but Color X is sitting very pretty atop Spectria there. Another Astral Barrage coming out. Is this going to be enough for the Assault Death Thriller Boom at that HP? Yes, it certainly will be. So the Color X now at plus six of its special attack, plus five right now in order to really snowball this match. It might not be that Ice Rider Calyrex, but it's certainly doing its best Ice Rider impression. As to Rapagos, this really is kind of the only way out for Antonio right now. Going for multiple Calm Mines, especially now that Thunderous has been cleared from the field. We've seen fine margins be turned around before when a player's back is against the wall in Regulations at G. You do have the Incineroar, but if you're Adam, you do still have the Terrestrialization option available as well in order to get around that. Right now, quad super effective dart type move make it not very effective. Yeah, and I think if you are Antonio, you need to really preserve that Terra Shell ability because as soon as that Urshifu comes onto the field, you've got something that is going to be able to pick up a knockout if that Terra Shell is broken. So, you know, the Astro Barrage constantly coming out here from the Calyrex, but that Terra Shell is still intact. The Incineroar going to go down now. The Calyrex is going to go to plus six, so maxing out that special attack stat. And can Terrapagos pick up the knockout onto that Incineroar? The problem is, of course, it gone for these calm mines. It is a way out where you say, okay, we get to plus yeah, yeah. four special defense now, plus two special attack. It's great. You're going to probably be able to pick up the knockout onto the Incineroar, but your, your move is a single target attack. And it's so easy now for the Calyrex just to say, well, I'm just going to drain and kiss you because I'm a max special attack and I don't really need to commit to the trasalization in this situation. Adam doing all the right things here, making it extremely difficult, turning this whole match around to be able to kind of come back. But of course, it's not over just yet. You do still have this one turn of Terra Shell and there is the leftovers and the grassy terrain on the field. So the Terra Shell could be restored right now. Terra Starstorm going to be taking out that Incineroar so it cannot have those leftovers was removed from it from a knockoff here. So yes, the Trapagos, it could be turning this around right now, thanks to its Terra Shell being reactivated and threatening down. Well, in this case, it would be an Earth Power into the Calyrex. Antonio does have that option, so it can still hit those Ghost Types. It does have Urshfu to contend with here now, though. And uh, with that Choice Scarf still intact, you can just break the Terra Shell with, well, in fact, it would be Urshfu breaking yeah, the Terra Shell, be. and then it would be a Draining Kicks coming out. You'd really want it to be the other way around to try and secure the knockout onto the Trapagos here. So really Really interesting endgame here. Yeah, it's a real conflict for Adam because preferably you'd be breaking the Terra Shell with the Calyrex and then following up with the close combat. Unfortunately, you can't do that in this situation because you have the Urshifu here, which is going to go first. It is going to break that Terra Shell and then will the, the initial damage be enough for that Draining Kiss to kind of close this matchup? We are going to see. We're going to see the Terrestrialization finally from the Calyrex. It is going to be the Fairy Terra type. We'll be boosting that Draining Kiss. The close combat coming out, breaking that Terra Shell. It's going to be really dicey right now as close combat, breaking the Terra Shell, not very effective right now, softening up the Urshifu as well. Now, a Terra boosted Draining Kiss coming out into Terrapagos. It does have plus four special defense right now. Terrapagos taking that really quite well, but it's all eyes right now onto what it locks into. Terra Starstorm connecting into the Urshifu, enough to secure the one-hit knockout. It's restricted versus restricted here, but of course the Calyrex able to heal up with the Draining Kiss too. It's terrestrialized away from the ghost type. So Terra Star Storm is oh. going to be hitting it now with the leftovers and the Grassy Train. You can always protect the Trapagos as well to get a little bit more recovery because the Grassy Train is still active on the field. Here we go, Lee. This is going to be so close. You can see the Calyrex is a plus six special attack here. Like you say, the Trapagos kind of forced at this point to go for that protect. It's going to get the double recovery from the last turn of Grassy Terrain and that leftovers as well, which might put it out of range from another draining case. The big question is, does the Trapagos have enough in its arsenal to be able to take down this Calyrex in one hit. 
Oh, I mean, the Calyrex is certainly a frail Pokemon, and the, 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 <laughs> uh, the Trapicos is at plus two of its special attack. The Grassy Train disappearing now, so it's reliant on the leftovers alone for recovery here. You just got to go for the Terra Star Storm and cross your fingers, I think. Draining Kiss going to be recovering a little bit onto the Calyrex. Of course, there could be some critical hits that come into play as well. These players have been doing fantastically in this matchup, and the margins could not be finer. This is what Regulation Set G offers us trainers excitement after excitement here it comes antonio deciding what the best move of choice is right now you just gotta go for that terra star storm draining kiss coming out first will it be enough we're gonna see it's gonna be right down to the wire oh. it's not enough the terapagos survives will the terra star storm be enough to return a knockout it's all Sharing, because yeah, it no, survives. It's no it's not the calorie is able to hang on and get that citrus bear recovery as well you can see adam there can't quite believe it either and now the trap goes you can get a little bit of leftover recovery you can protect and get that a little bit more but based on the damage that draining kiss is going is doing is looking like this is going to be in adam's favor yeah this is huge what a survival there from the color X to take that terra star storm and just enough we are going to see the protect we are going to see a draining kiss blocked into that protect give antonio a little bit more room to get leftovers recovery but you've got to say at this point it's probably not enough to take another draining kiss Adam doing so well in this game to pin in that trap because to prevent it from getting carried away and utilizing that nasty plot absolutely massively. The draining kiss coming out from the Calyrex and it there is it enough. Is. Adam enough. is going to take the game. Huge congratulations to Adam Chafui having secured Swiss round six here. Shadow Rider Calyrex coming out on top of Terrapagos. Fireworks are going <laughs> off, just for super effective. But then you've got to watch out for the Raging Bolt that could be threatening newly super effective damage into a Terra Flying King Gambit. Let's get the leads. That's Cali Rex and the Rillaboom coming out for Leonardo. Here comes Miraidon and for Rigora for Mateo. Yeah, so for Rigora, of course, a very good partner for Miraidon for numerous reasons. First of all, we will see the Electric Terrain come on the field just for a second. Uh, Rillaboom, of course, is going to override that, but it will activate the Electric Seed on that Frigoref, so boosting its defense, um, which is highly welcome against the powerful Woodhammers, for example, from that Rillaboom. But nicely for Leonardo, grassy terrain overriding the electric terrain, that will make that Miraidon much less threatening. Really quick locking in a moves there from Mateo, really fascinating to see. Getting that game plan down, just going with your gut, sometimes that can be what it's all about. Yes, the grassy train having overwritten the electric train here, so lowering that damage output of the Miraidon and enabling a, well, it would have enabled a priority grassy glide had that Frigoroff not been blocking the priority on the field thanks to its armor tail ability. Yeah, but we have seen that Miraidon runs overheat, and of course that is one way to get rid of a Rillaboom. Um, it looks like Leonardo is a little bit worried about that because Rillaboom is one of the best Pokemon to have against Miraidon, but you don't want to lose it just yet. Of course, yeah, you can't go for the fake out. So hmm, do you want to terrestrialize on the first turn defensively? Um, that's not what Leonardo has in mind. So switches out into the Clefairy. It's going to be the terrestrialization onto the Calyrex instead into its most common type at this point, the Fairy Terra type. Here comes a helping hand coming out from Frigoroth's hooves, ready to boost up this Miraidon's already overwhelming damage output. Overheat into Clefairy, Ooh. not enough for the knockout, but that is a very very bulky Pokemon brought down very low already. Yeah, but now what does that Calyrex do? If it's going to okay. be the draining kiss, this could be detrimental, but it is that nasty plot. So uh, getting a big, big boost already. Um, of course, we will, or we got some confirmation of, about the speed tiers. Um, usually Calyrex is a little bit faster, or can be a little bit faster than Miraidon, but it looks like the Calyrex over on Leonardo's side might be trained so bulkily and defensively that the Maraid on over on Mateo's side actually is faster. Yeah, fascinating to see how these speed tiers interact. Of course, really crucial information for these players in order to glean going into future turns of the match if their backs end up against the wall. King Gambit, really nice switch in to potentially the Astral Barrage, but actually it's going to be the Draining Kiss trying to get rid of the support that the Frigograph offers with a critical hit there as well. Oh. Sing is going to be connecting down onto the King Gambit, freshly switched in. So no more kowtowing for you, my friend. Just bedtime. 
Yeah, but the trick room coming out here from the Frigoref, meaning that now, of course, Matteo will have a little bit of a speed advantage, but that's saying really crucial play. Now, usually, of course, Miraidon teams, they don't have to worry too much about sleep because, well, you have the electric terrain that blocks any, any sleep inducing moves. And usually the most common Pokemon to override the terrain is Rillaboom. But Rillaboom and Amoongus, which is the primary Pokemon to use sleep-inducing moves, those don't get along too well, at least on the same team. So usually, if you have a Maridon, you don't have to worry so much about sleep. But now with the combination of Rillaboom and Clefairy with Sing, maybe this is not something that Mateo is used to dealing with his team, but now, yeah, that King Gambit being asleep, that is a huge deal because um, Leonardo can now wait a little bit, stall a few turns of the Trick Room, um, while Matteo just has to hope to wake up quickly. Yeah, Psychic going into the Protect there from the Clefairy. Buying this Caliwax it's a little bit of a turn because King Gambit is going to be asleep, taking a mandatory turn of sleep right now on the field as Draining Kiss coming out into the Frigrath going to be enough to secure the knockout here. Sing, very inaccurate move, only 55% accurate, but, you know, when that coin flip lands in your favor, then it can be huge. Yeah, and I was thinking for a second, huh, maybe the Caliwax could go for, for another nasty plot, but it doesn't really need to, right? You can just take the KO and uh, get a boost that way with the Gramne ability. And now, even though there was an Assault vs. King Gambit and a Ferrigoref, which is immune to ghost type attacks on the field, um, yeah, in the end, the Calyrex Shadow Rider still came out on top, at least in that little interaction. So now, of course, Matteo bringing in the Iron Hands has the chance to maybe go for a fake out, um, buy another turn for the King Gambit to then hopefully wake up. Um, but uh, yeah, without the King Gambit's damage output, those Trick Room turns, they will be over sooner than you can blink. Yeah, we've seen King Gambit running only Dark-type moves in the past, but this one does have access to Iron Head, so it would be threatening either Pokémon on Leonardo's side for super effective. Maridon will be coming back in, change that terrain up, meaning that Sing is not going to be doing anything on the field because Electric Terrain prevents sleep, as well as boosting up the Quark Drive of the Iron Hands right there, presumably the attack stat. Of course, that is what Leonardo locked into, but Sing not going to be doing anything here. Heavy Slam Ooh. into the Calyrex, bringing it down to about a fifth of its health, but activating the Citrus Berry instead. It's yeah. got a Grimnay boost as well. But if that is a Draining Kiss, I have a feeling those HP will be back very quickly. Yep. Yeah. Here it is. It's coming out into the Maridon here, the Restricted for Mateo. That's going to be Mateo's Restricted Pokemon down and out. Another critical hit there. I wouldn't be surprised if that didn't matter because this seems to be a very offensive Maridon. The Calyrex with a Grimnay boost and that Fairy Terror going for the Draining Kiss. And Mateo already down to the final two Pokemon, one of which is asleep. Yeah, one of which is asleep, the other one is uh, weak to draining Kiss. So um, it feels like even though Leonardo hasn't yet revealed their fourth and final Pokemon, um, there has to be some combination of moves to maybe protect Switch, to get like fake out pressure or something like that, and maybe get the Clefairy back in, even if something goes down, um, to just protect that Calyrex for just one more turn, because I feel like one more draining Kiss um, yeah, might just end this game right away. Yeah, the Calyrex is just getting boosted and boosted getting so much energy out of these kisses it's going for, but Leonardo deciding it's time to sacrifice those just in case the King Gambit does wake up perhaps, going for an Iron Head, and here comes a Rillaboom <coughs> onto the field. Of course, this also allows the terrain to be overwritten, so Sing can be putting things to sleep. Uh, and that's going to be <laughs> the Quark Drive overwritten as well, as this Clefairy seems to be wearing its spectacles because those Sings just keep hitting. They are very accurate Sing, uh, hitting every pitch. Uh, nicely yeah. done there by the Clefairy. King Gambit still a Sleep, I guess at this point it doesn't really matter too much because yeah, Leonardo has established a very commanding board state. All four Pokemon uh, still somewhat healthy. Um, the Clefairy with a friend guard helping out its ally Pokemon here. And um, yeah, I think it's just a matter of time until uh, Leonardo can find um, a position where he then can really go for the massive damage. Um, I mean, we haven't seen a terrestrialization yet come out of Mateo, so that is something that uh, Leonardo still has to be a little bit. Uh, not worried about, but like, considering with his place. Um, and finally, I think King Gambit yes. wakes up and will get a knockout. Yeah, that's going to be a uh, little victory for style points there for Mateo, claiming the knockout onto the Clefairy. This is really crucial time for Mateo to be 
be reflecting on how to approach game two, I think. Really putting all eggs into the Maraidon basket there, all the gas into Maraidon's tank. This, uh, Leonardo's team is getting critical hit after critical <laughs> hit here. I don't know, he's feeding his Clefairy some kind of accuracy boosting berries and feeding his Pokemon some critical hit boosting berries as well. But uh, yeah, Mateo, perhaps approaching game two, needs to think about something a little bit slower and steadier. I'd love to see the Iron Leaves come out, but it's running the Terra Stella. And when you've got a Calyrex on the field that threatens such heavy damage with an Astral Barrage, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see it at all, unfortunately. But now there is that Noble Steed on the field once more. Yeah, once more that Calyrex. Now, of course, no more boosts yet, um, but uh, it might just uh, get another one if it is able to knock out that Iron Hands. And I feel like just double targeting the Iron Hands where you know there is no Protect. Um, it is carrying a clear amulet, but uh, yeah, doesn't have protect, doesn't need to, I guess. Uh, if you're under Trick Room, you want to attack usually. Um, but um, looks like the Terrestrialization actually is going off on the King Gambit, maybe to get access to that Terra Blast, uh, Terra Flying Terra Blast to deal with the... Um, with the Rillaboom, of course, on Leonardo's side of the field. Yeah, well, that is going to make it uh, more vulnerable now to an Astral Barrage. Of course, the special attack boost sacrifice once that Calyrex was switched out, but it's going to get another one right now with that Iron Hands going down. Let's hope that the King Gambit sword atop of his head doesn't pop one of those balloons because it's looking mighty sharp right now. But yeah, the U-turn is able to pivot out that Rillaboom so something can come in to take that flying type Terra Blast much better. It's going to be the reveal of the fourth Pokemon for Leonardo. <clears throat> and yes, gonna be Raging Bolt. There's nothing quite like an uphill struggle against a Pokemon that has such a long neck. Yeah, and uh, a Pokemon that will throw its Thunderbolts at you, its Thunderclaps when you just turned into a flying type. Um, there will be the Terra Blast, but that's one of the sadder Terra Blasts, I would say, that I've yeah. seen. Um, so, yeah, once again, Leonardo um, yeah, just has everything under control. Now Matteo is like, okay, I've seen enough. Um, <laughs> coming out from the Maraidon, but that's your restricted. You've got to pivot around. Might be an uphill struggle, but let's see the progress that Matteo can make. There it is! That's the Iron Leaves. Let's go! Yeah, next to the Frigoraph, just like I called it. Okay, so now you kind of switch the Frigoraph into the Maraidon, and I think you have one turn to do a lot of damage with it, Iron Leaves. Now, uh, let's see what Matteo decides to go for. I think that could be a, it could be a good plan. It could be a good plan, yeah. It seems like that Maradon is lurking in the back. Question is, how much damage would this Astral Barrage do? It seems like Mateo, having really pivoted towards uh, the Maridon in that previous game, this time is going to take a walk through those rustly autumn iron leaves. Yeah, and of course, one advantage of using a Pokemon like Iron Leaves is I'm pretty sure Leonardo has no idea how much damage this thing does. Yes. Like, Especially then considering the other damage modifiers like the Choice Ban and the Terra Stellar. Like, uh, yeah, that's now Mateo's home ground that we're fighting on. Certainly is. You don't really want to be switching in your Restricted to a Calyrex that can be dealing out such massive damage. But here we go. It is going to be overriding the terrain and giving that Iron Leaves a big old boost to what we can only assume is going to be its attack stat, given it's carrying that Choice Ban. But let wait to be confirmed. No, it's going to be the speed actually being boosted of that Iron Leaves and going all in for the stellar type terrestrialization. <laughs> I bet you weren't expecting a Terra Stellar Iron Leaves on stream today, trainers. Well, Bologna is delivering. Very welcome to you at home. Here it is. Here's the Iron Leaves, boosted by that Quark Drive with the Choice Ban. Here comes that one time Terra Stellar boost. That's going to be the Psycho Side Blade into the Clefairy. Wow. Not going to be enough for the knockout, but huge damage. That's going to be nasty block coming out from Calyrex, but uh. you could be knocked out before you can even achieve anything, depending on what this Iron Leaves is doing. Doing next absolutely so <laughs> yeah that that side blade doing so much damage to the clefairy not quite enough for the knockout but still definitely putting it in range on another one um now leonardo he was pretty unfazed though he was like okay i don't even care i don't know how much damage you do but i don't need to know because i'll just set up i'll bring in my friend guard pokemon to protect the calyrex set up another nasty plot and then you still have to deal with the calyrex um so yeah, it would have been great for Matteo, of course, getting that first knockout, but now I think he has to reposition just a little bit. The good thing for Matteo, though, is that we know that the Maraidon is actually faster than the Calyrex on Leonardo's yes. side. Yeah, exactly. And so is the Iron Leaves, at least with that quad drive boost. That's Rugrath going to activate its Electric Seed. Boosting its defense, not going to be so important in front of this special attacker. Clefairy, though, also going to retreat to the back. And presumably, that Rillaboom coming in in order to overwrite Maridon's road to victory. But let's see what these Pokemon are locking into after this Calyrex has got that double boost to its uh. special attack. Oh, it's going to be a dodge from the Rillaboom from what was presumably that overheat would have been really 
really nice to yep. get that. Very fortunate for Leonardo there. Ash Barrage not going to do anything into the free oh. And another critical hit. What is going on with Leonardo right now? One hit KO into Mateo's restricted. Yeah, what a swing here in this game. Missing um, a crucial move on the Rillaboom and then getting knocked out in return. Definitely not what Mateo wanted to see. Um, I mean, the one good thing that is going on for him, I guess, is he can now switch in the King Gambit. And, well, against a, what is it now, plus three Calyrex, there's not a lot of Pokemon I would like to have on the field. But, yeah, for Rigorev and uh, Assault West King Gambit, those might just be able to barely um, hang on um, to even one of those, yeah, boosted hits. Um, but um, yeah, that, that's definitely that's definitely rough for Matteo right there. Certainly Matteo's best option is the King Gamma and the Frigoroff right now. Trying to clinch this out. Do you make the call that the Calyrex is going for the Terrestrialization? Yep. And then uh, try and go for the Iron Head? Well, it's going to be the Terrestrialization coming out over on Leonardo's side. It will be going into the Calyrex. Okay. The King of the Ghosts has become the King of the Fairies right now, threatening even more damage with its Draining Kiss move. And of course, that all important recovery holding the Citrus Berry. Here comes the Helping Hand into the King Gambit. Mateo going all in once again, what he's been doing throughout this set, not before a Draining. Kiss going to come out, locking down into that for Rigoroff, trying to secure the knockout. Not enough for Rigoroff, brought down very low, but of course a very bulky Pokemon. Oh. Super effective U-turn, not enough for the knockout either onto the Rigoroff. Wow, yeah, I think Leonardo really wanted to, to double and knock out the Rigoroff just to prevent any sort of yeah, trick room going up. And I'm pretty sure Matteo also expected any combination of moves to maybe knock it out. But now oh, this means... Oh, Iron Head with mm, the Fairy friend, friend Guard is going to be protecting the Calyrex, activating uh. the Citrus Berry, so just enough HP. You can see how crucial that survival was on the Clefairy earlier on in the game. Yeah, that U-turn is such a powerful, powerful move to bring in um, the friend guard Pokemon on the field because it, it acts almost like switching in like an Intimidate. It's not as powerful in the, yeah, the yeah. damage risk re re um, reduction, but but still just enough to have that Calyrex um, survive that Iron Head, and then, yeah, with the grassy terrain and the Citrus Berry, now it's almost back healthy. Um, if it can get in another one of those draining kisses, um, yeah, once again, that Calyrex, uh, so difficult to knock out. Follow me coming out from the Clefairy, doing what it does best, supporting his buddy. Here comes another draining kiss into the Frigoroff, easily enough to secure the knockout right now. Recovering a tiny bit more HP as well, that will, of course, stack with the grassy terrain. That's on the field as well. Mateo's Miraidon is down, so won't be able to switch it in and override that terrain to prevent a sing that could be coming out. And here it goes, that Calyrex getting even spookier with a boost to its special attack. Yet another one as the Clefairy is going down to the Iron Head here. So, you know, Leonardo down to three Pokemon, Mateo down to two, but the Iron Leaves really not in a great spot right now. Yeah, I have to say, well, Iron Leaves, um, I'm, I'm glad that uh, Mateo brought it, and I'm glad that we got to see the, the cool the cool play, like switching in the Miraidon, um, but in the end, it yeah, just wasn't powerful enough, I guess, or you could also argue that the, the Calyrex Shadow Rider was just too strong. Uh, Leonardo, so strong, winning that game. Leonardo Bononomi progressing through to day two at a 7-0 and record. Huge congratulations to them, and congratulations, of course, to Matteo Centrone as well. Chances to be able to set up a sword stance. Yeah, definitely, because there are some, uh, there are a lot of Pokemon on Lucas' side of the field that are really susceptible to those precipice blades, but we are going to get in to this game number one. We're going to see Ivan lead off with the Goth itself and the Chiyu. The Beads of Rune are active, and also that Shadow Tag now active. Nothing and switch out on Lucas' side of the field as long as that got the tell stays on the field. We're going to see the Maraidon and the Whimsicott from Lucas. So a very offensive lead from Lucas' side of the field as that electric train is set up from that Hadron engine ability. Yeah, normally the Maraidon wants to just vault switch out and that's easily, easily doable in the face of Shadow Tag. That will ignore that ability completely. But it's got to contend with the fake out here. You can't fake out the Whimsicott because it's carrying the Covert Cloak. So this makes a, the Maraidon completely open to that fake out, would stop any of the vault switches and allow that Chiyu to get off a mass attack, whether that's a heat wave to KO the Whimsicott or it's a Dark Pulse to do absolutely massive damage to the opposing Maraidon. But we're going to be starting off with a Terrestrialization immediately, and it's going to be that Ghost Terror, oh no, sorry, the Ground Terror on the Chiyu. Ground Terror on the Chiyu, and it will be able to have a full immunity from any electric type attacks coming out from this Maraidon. We're going to see the Helping Hand come out from the Goth itself, and it's going to boost the attacks from this Chiyu. A light screen coming out from the Whimsicott, going to bolster those special defenses on Lucas' side of the field. 
and this Terra Blast. It will be a ground type attack and it will be fired into likely the Mariodon with that light screen though. You've got to think it will be able to take it, but no, a big knockout here from Ivan taking a big lead in this first game. Yeah, that's a fantastic play coming out from Ivan because that was not a fake out into the Mariodon. That could have been Tailwind and Volt Switch. <laughs> and then suddenly the Terra, Bound, Terra, Terra Grounds Terra Blast doesn't go into the Mariodon anymore, but calling out that it was going to be the light screen instead of the Tailwind. Fantastic play from Ivan. Uh, that helping hand was probably necessary through the light screen to be able to get the KO. Uh, so calling that out brilliantly with the helping hand and taking care of the restricted just on the first turn. Yeah, and things get very difficult for Luca now because of that Gothitelle on the field. It's, it's going to be a hard Pokemon to take down because now you've got that kind of trap active, of course. Uh, the Urshifu the coming into the field now for Luca, but not really going to pressure with too much heavy damage on that side of the field. The Cheat is in an awkward position where it probably does want to switch out. Ivan wants to readjust the board position, so some, something like the Raging Bolt could come in here, which doesn't really mind. The Whims have got too much, especially because it has got that Assault Vest. Going to be able to take those Fairy-type attacks a little bit better and then pressure that Urshifu a little bit more. Yeah, if that Golfatel was able to get off something like a Taunt into the opposing Whimsicott, that would be able to shut it down very nicely. Uh, the Cheat U surely is going to be in range of the Wicked Blow because it's not the most defensive and you don't run it very bulky if you're running Choice Scarf. Uh, but it's just a Detect coming out from the Urshifu here, not going on the offensive yet. Encoring, that's with uh, Golfatel into the Helping Hand here uh, instead of something that could have been like a Foul Play or a Taunt coming into the Whimsicott. Terra Blast launched off into that Protect of the Urshifu, not doing anything there. And then you don't see it very often, Helping Hand right at the end of the turn. <laughs> yeah, not really when it is, has got that priority boost to it. We are going to see maybe Luca have to rely on this Urshifu now, going for that terrestrialization, lock in with the Wicked Blow, and that would be enough to get the Chi Yu, not known for its defensive capabilities. And now the Gothitelle is perpetually locked into that helping hand for the next few turns, at least until our Encore does end. But will the Chi Yu be able to pick up the knockout with the Terra Blast, with that helping hand through the light screen on to this Urshifu that doesn't have a weakness to the ground type attack? Well, will it even be able to get off that attack? because now you can just go for a Tailwind pretty safely with the Whimsicott. That will allow the Urshifu to outspeed the opposing Chi Yu. Gothitelle switching out into the ground on here because it was locked into Helping Hand. Might want to reset that fake out pressure that does have available. Uh, you can't switch out with your Lucas side of the field, so you don't have to worry about anything like that. But you do have to worry about this Terra Dark coming out from the Urshifu. This might be the boost that tips that KO onto the Chi Yu over the edge with the Wicked Blow. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we're just seeing that Tailwind and Wicked Blow here. Whimsicott does go for that Tailwind. Now the Urshifu should be faster than even the Choice Scarf Chi Yu. Going to be able to do absolutely massive damage with this Wicked Blow. Now boosted by the Terra Dark into the Chi Yu, and that is a one-hit KO. Yeah, and flipping the tables around, Luke able to pick up a massive knockout onto the Terrasalized Pokemon on Ivan's side of the field. That big threat in the Chi you now removed from the field. Beads of Ruin gone as well. So no more boosts to those special attacks, special defense all back to as they were. So that light screen going to be even more beneficial. But in the face of something like the Groudon, you've got to worry more about those physical attacks. And even if you are the dark terrestrialization on that Urshifu, Jamie, Groudon generally known for those big defensive stats, being able to take physical attacks very well. Yeah, it is very physically bulky and it's going to be able to launch out a lot of offense. I wouldn't be surprised if two Precipice Blades is enough to be able to pick up the knockout on the opposing Urshfu. In comes the Gothitelle once again, so there's still the Shadow Tag going to be activated. No switching out here for Luca. You got a very free fake out into the Urshfu to stop any Wicker Bows this turn if you want, but then you do have to worry about the fact that you can be on court into that fake out afterwards. So maybe you lock into the Helping Hand once again. Do you go for the Foul Play, expecting maybe Precipice Blades in, and the Foul Play now that it's only uh, uh, single resisted rather than quad resisted? Would that be enough to pick up the knockout on the Urshfu? That would be pretty close. Yeah, potentially, but the Whimsicott has to be careful here because it can get knocked out from just a single Fire Punch. You can go for the Fake Out into the Urshifu, like you said, and just Fire Punch into the Whimsicott. It hasn't mm -hmm. got that Focus Sash, so it will go down, um, and it's got no way to protect either. It has set up its Tailwind, it's set up its Light Screen, and there's nothing to really on-call this turn, so it's a bit of a sitting target. Maybe a Moon Blast is what you go for to get some last-ditch damage off. Yeah, the Fake Out here going to be putting a stop to that Urshifu, but it did go for the Protect, so no Focus Sash broken here. A Moon Blast, just the last efforts to be able to do actually some respectable yeah, chips yeah. to the opposing crowd on. I mean, yeah, there is that fire punch in the sun, easily enough to be able to pick up that one hit KO on that Whimsicott. Yeah, tying up the scores here as we have, well, not tying up the scores, I, I even still got a Pokemon we haven't seen yet as yeah. Luca going to reveal their last Pokemon. It is the Chi Yu. It is going to really thrive under this sun, especially with those fire type attacks. So really one Pokemon that you would say now could do a job maybe against this crowd on the Gothitelle where you could launch off maybe a Heat wave here and then follow.
followed up with a wicked blow, probably enough to maybe knock out both things on, on either side of the field. Yeah, you don't have Terrestrialization available anymore for either side of the field. If you could have the Terra Fire available on the Groudon, you'd have been able to resist those fire type attacks coming out from Chiyu and probably able to survive. But now that that, that was used on the, the Chiyu, can't go for that defensively anymore. And like we said, Groudon very physically bulky. Not the greatest special defense. Like, it's it's fine, but not going to be good enough in the face of the Chiyu in the sun, one of the strongest special attackers that we have. That's probably why the Groudon is protecting itself. Yeah, no one to dig any damage this turn. The Groudon protecting here as that overheat is fired into that slot. Now they've got the tail left kind of open to take a wicked blow, but is it going to be surviving? I don't think so. Boosted by that dark terrestrialization, wicked blow cleanly knocking out the Gothitelle and removing that Shadow Tag, no, not something that's affecting Luca because he only has those two Pokemon left, but two strong Pokemon they are. Has Ivan got enough with the last Pokemon to deal with this big threat on Luca's side of the field? Yeah, we we'll have to see what that last Pokemon is going to be. It looks like it's going to be that Fluttermane. Uh, whether it's going to get a speed boost or not could be very important here. Uh, we're going to get that Harsh Sunlight activating that Protosynthesis. It is going to be the speed boost. Now it's going to come down to the training of these Pokemon, but whether that Fluttermane is still going to be able to outspeed in the last turn of Tail wins. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Wicked Blow, that's going to be enough into the plus main when you've got your Dark Terror available. Over here, surely enough into the opposing Groudon, so... Yeah, does the Fluttermane, uh, uh, is it able to outspeed here? Maybe get a, a knockout onto the Chiyu or the Urshifu? Well, they can't get a knockout onto the Urshifu. It's still got its Focus Sash attack, but no, Chiyu is faster. Overheat into the Groudon. That is enough to pick up the Groudon here. Luca with the big overheat, boosted by that sun, enough to take down this behemoth restricted in Groudon, leaving this Fluttermane slower again, not fast enough, even with that Protosynthesis boost in the Tailwind. The Urshifu, wicked blowing to victory. Yeah, very, very nicely done by Luca. After, That's in the face of him, ride on and Whimsicott, that would be a very reasonable lease, because you can just, well, there you go. Seems like you it perfectly. <laughs> uh, but there is the switch up from both of these trainers here. Uh, Ivan did uh, read Lee's mind and go with that Gothitelle and the Groudon, uh, but it's the Urshifu left, led with the Whimsicott rather than the Maridon for Luca. Yeah, I really like this adjustment from both trainers here. I think the Urshifu coming out, knowing that Ivan's going to lean heavily towards that Gothitelle. You've got that wicked blow. The Gothitelle can't protect it. Has got access to fake out, so that has mm -hmm. to be something you do consider. You run the risk, if you go for that though, getting locked into Encore uh, the following turn, so it can be messy, but I think trying to get rid of that Gothitelle has to be the top priority here. You get rid of that Shadow Tag, you free yourself up, you're able to switch around again, but at the same time, you can't ignore that ground on it. has got access to Sword Stance in the face of a Whimsicott though. It's a bit risky again, but that has got the Fire Punch that can pick up a knockout onto that Pokemon, and Groudon not the sort of Pokemon that can get knocked out from a Wicked Blow. Yeah, and it seemed like a Fake Out into the Urshifu and a Fire Punch into the Whimsicott would have been pretty safe there, but no, no Fake Out from this Gothitelle. It's a Switch Out into the Raging Bolts so are going to be an adjustment for Ivan as well. Well, we'll see if this Urshifu is going to be keeping itself safe from what could have been the fake out. And yet, there it is. There's the detect. Makes a lot of sense to keep your focus, Sash, if you are going to be taking a fake out. Uh, the Tailwind coming out from the Whimsicott. Maybe already a last ditch effort to help the team as this Groudon. Yes, it's just going for the Fire Punch, connecting into that Whimsicott, getting that one hit KO. And that's going to free up not not just the rest of your team from the Onslaught, but like the Gothitelle can actually properly support the team now. Yeah, it can come back in, trap the remaining three Pokemon that Luca's got, and kind of pin him into situations that aren't that favorable. I've been doing a really nice job to almost kind of fake a fake out, right? And yeah. then switch the Gothitelle straight out of harm's way. And I think the Raging Bone coming in is the sacrifice almost. If a Wicked Blow comes out, probably no on the calculations, the, the, the Raging Bolt might be able to take that, that Wicked Blow, probably likely without the Trastalization. Yeah. But at the same time, if it does go down, you don't mind because you get your Gothitelle back onto the field. And the Groudon's dealt with that threat in the Whimsicott. And now things become a little bit tricky for Luke. He has got that Tailwind set up, and then that's great. So you can get something like this Chi that's coming onto the field now and really pressure and maybe from that game on we are going to see if that overheat will be enough to pick up the knockout onto the Groudon. Well, we could see it, but then we could also see that defensive terrestrialization that is now available in this game to the Groudon could turn into that fire type. If it's able to survive the, this turn and launch off Precipice Blades, that's a KO to you, for sure. Like, no <laughs> chance. Uh, and then the Urshifu would take a load of damage, probably be in range of Maybe even just you go for a Thunderclap and a Precipice Blades, and then if your ground and survives the turn, that's a double KO. Like the Thunderclap in the sun paired with Precipice Blades would KO the Urshifu as well. It seems like Luca doesn't really have an ability to KO both Pokemon here. He can probably KO one, definitely with a double up, that would KO either Pokemon, whichever way you double it up. 
but then you can't deal with both, and then suddenly you're going to take a load of damage, whether that's the Protosynthesis boosted Raging Bolt or even the Groudon. Well, we are diving into this next turn, starting off with the Terrestrialization here from that Urshifu going again for that Dark Terror type, going to boost the power of those Dark type attacks through the roof as we are going to see the Groudon just go for a Protect, not wanting to contend with getting knocked out this turn. It is a pivotal piece for Ivan and the Thunderclap coming in, breaking that Sash. Oh, wow. wow, doing so much damage, taking it right down to that Focus Sash, but surviving just enough to be able to get an attack off. Heatwave coming out from the Chiyu, going to be resisted by this Raging Bolt, but still under the sun. Oh, I'm taking that pretty comfortably. Yeah, but is it going to take this Wicked Blow potentially? Or oh, this could have gone into the Groudon. They can't protect in front of an Urshfu. That's oh, oh, oh. massive damage into ground. That's over half to such a physically bulky Pokemon. But yeah, like the Heat Wave would have surely been able to KO that Groudon. So it yeah. may look a bit strange to like protecting in front of an Urshfu, but if it didn't and Heat Wave connected with the Groudon, that was a KO. Yeah, because Ivan's done a really smart thing here where now you go for that initial Thunderclap and even if the Wicked Blow comes into your Groudon, you take some damage, right? You, you are now in the position where the Raging Bolt actually pressures the knockout onto that Urshfu and it doesn't give it the freedom to go for the Wicked Blow this next turn, which is so, so smart. Of Ivan. The Groudon's still kind of threatened here, but it does, like you've already mentioned, have that defensive terrestrialization that it could go for and give it the immunity to those fire type attacks that we know that Chi Yu's locked into. Yeah, it's, at this point, it's going to be pretty close if the Groudon's able to survive. Like, it's, it's a sun boosted heat wave from a Chi Yu. It's still really strong. <laughs> Even into resisted hits, it would do absolutely massive damage. But it is going to be a terrestrialization coming out from Ivan here, and it is going to be that Groudon. So going for that fire typing, is that going to be enough to save it from this sun boosted? Heatwave from the Chi Yu. We'll have to see if that is going to be the case. If it is, it will be able to launch off a massive precipice plate. There's the Heatwave, and oh, it just survives! What a clutch terrestrialization from that Groudon. And the Wicked Blow, it didn't go into the Groudon, it went into that Raging Bolt. It is enough to be able to pick up the KO, but now the Groudon has the opportunity to launch off a precipice plate. Both Pokemon are in range. It's got shaky accuracy, and it does connect. Oh. Hey, that's going to be a double connection and a double KO coming out from this Groudon. Absolutely <laughs> clutch survival. That is a huge turn here from Ivan. You did not expect it to take that hit from the Chiyu, like you were mentioning, stacking up those attack boosts that the Chiyu had. Under the sun, the heat wave, the beads of ruin, the ground on Trasalize and surviving, returning with a huge press of his blade. Surprised we didn't see a thunderclap there from the Raging Bolt. Maybe would have saved it and would have had that at the disposal here coming in against this Maraidon. Not over, of course. The Maraidon going to have that choice specs. I am going to have the Tailwind still intact, but the Gothitelle can come in now and freely go for a fake out. Precipice Blades, as long as it hits, it is going to pick up a huge knockout, tie up this game and take us potentially to a game three. Yeah, you say, you say potentially, <laughs> you've always got the shaky accuracy <laughs> of that Precipice Blade. There is the fake out, going to keep the ride on safe. Is this going to be a connection with the Precipice? It yes, is. Yes, this is. Going to come completely sweep through Luca's team there. What a fantastic fantastic showing from that crowd <laughs> on clutching it out and launching us into this game three. Whether that wins is going to be led again or if it's left in the back, we'll have to see. It's going to be Golf Girls crowd on, so I've been relying on what worked here. But yep, there is the Urshfu and the Wimscott once again for this game three. Yeah, and we did see the one thing that we could say from that, that second game that Luca did was uh, it, we're able to see the damage from a Terrestrialized Wicked Blow into the Groudon. You think two of those would be enough to get the Groudon, and then if you still got a healthy enough Urshifu, one's all you're going to need for that Gothitel. So maybe utilizing that Terrestrialization early on from Luca, even in this situation where you are trapped, the only issue with that is you've got to contend with that fake out again, and you do that, you get faked out, and then you lose your Whimsicott for the trouble of just setting up a Tailwind. Yeah, you do have the option of the Terra Fire. That would allow the Winscott to survive, at least, and that might uh, come into play here. But then, you, of course, you'd lose the damage output that, from the yeah. Terra Dark and the Urshfu, and that's necessary to pick up some KOs as well. So it's quite a tricky one. And yeah, no, no, this time it's going to be Fake Out and no Protect here. So Sash broken on the Urshfu. Very nicely done from the Gothdale here. There is that Tailwind once again coming out from the Winscott. But Urshfu is going to flinch here. It's not going to be able to Wicked Blow that. So oh. Oh. And wow, <laughs> there's a Sword Stance from the Groudon in the face of the Wimscott. The Wimscott didn't get KO'd here. Yeah, that's very risky because yeah. now you're in the position where you have to protect that crowd on this next turn, potentially reposition the Gothitelle, get something in alongside it that can maybe 
get rid of that that the threat of the encore from the whimsical because now it's easy for luca just to say okay well i'm just going to click encore into that crowd on even if you protect this turn i'll click it the next turn and i'll lock you in i prevent you from being able to do any damage all the time even though that urshifu has a satch broken it's going to be able to just utilize that wicked blow especially into that got the tail slot and what comes in for that yeah. is it going to be able to take a wicked blow very well probably not yeah and, and maybe relying on something like protect ground ground on and taunt the whimsical but then that could be an encore into the fake out so on the protect yeah. turn as well. So uh, <laughs> j just like who, who's going to, if that's going to be a protector, where does the encore go? I think it's definitely an encore. Whether yeah. you encore or try and encore the fake out or you try and encore the sword stance, that's going to be the key thing here because it's not going to be the Gothitelle uh, going to be encored here. So the Fluttermane switching in. Is this ground going to be locked into sword stance? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see the Fluttermane coming in, the Protosynthesis activating and the yeah. encore into that crowd on locked into that sword stance now. Not going to be able to attack as long as the encore is in effect. Now this does all Open the door for a close combat from the Urshifu. Doing some big damage. It's a critical hit into yeah. the Groudon there. So doing some very significant damage. And now the thing is, the Groudon locked into that sword stance. It is a sitting target. The next turn is going to be taken down from another close combat, another wicked blow. But what we found out earlier was that this Urshifu actually outspeeds the Fluttermane under Tailwind, even though we've seen that Protosynthesis ability activated. Uh, the thing is, though, we know the Fluttermane has that Choice Specs item. So it hasn't got the ability to protect in this situation. If we do see that terrestrialization into the dark terror type Urshifu, the Wicked Blow will be enough to take down that. I don't, I don't think you even need to commit to this. You've already got the Tailwinds. You can get that extra chip that would be necessary with just the Moonblast from the Whimsicott. That's a good the, point. The ground on yeah. is, is just useless at the moment. It's just going to be stuck sword dancing. You'll need to deal with it eventually. You can't let it get to plus six and then attack. <laughs> But at the moment, you can ignore it. It's yeah. not doing anything. And the and bigger like, priority yeah. is that Fluttermane. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, it can't protect. It's a guaranteed Moonblast and Wicked Blow into that slot. Whether that was the Gothitelle switching in, that would be KO'd. If that was the Raging Bolt switching in, it would have been a super effective Moonblast, maybe even a KO'd with that. It switched into the Groudon slot instead, so it's not going to be taking that combination of attacks if that is what Luca went for, assumedly into the Fluttermane. Uh, it's going to be a terrestrialization here as well, but it's the Fluttermane. It's not going to be the Urshifu. So actually, if there wasn't a terrestrialization on the Urshifu, this is now a not very effective Wicked Blow into the Fluttermane. Does that mean it's able to survive these combination of attacks if it's Moonblast and Wicked Blow? Well, we're going to find out the Moonblast first off into that Fluttermane, followed up by a Wicked Blow, not boosted by yeah. that terrestrialization. Able to take it, a really nice terrestrialization there from Ivan, allowing this Fluttermane to stay around on the field and fire off a big Terra Boosted Dazzling Gleam, enough to pick up that Urshifu. Yeah, not quite on the, the Whimsicott there, but very good to use Terrestrialization there. Of course, Terra Fairy is so often used offensively on Flutamane, but of course can be used defensively, dropping that Ghost Typing, meaning that Dark is now not very effective. I don't think that a Terra Dark Wicked Blow would have been able to KO the Flutamane there either, so good conservation of the Terra coming out from Luca's side of the field. A Chiyu coming in is going to be able to outspeed the Flutamane once again and be able to threaten with just Heatwave KOs at this point. Uh, the Whimsicott is taking a load of damage. It's going to be in range of the Thunderclap here, so you do need to be careful about going for, for Moonblast, especially because you're next to Chiyu. That would definitely mean that it's in range of the Thunderclap. Uh, so probably just going safe here for the light screen. That would help a lot against the opposing Ranger Bolt, and then the Chiyu can clean up that Fluttermane quite easily. Yeah, especially with the Tailwind set up now, and it's got that Choice Scoff as well for the added speed that it doesn't necessarily need at the moment, but as long as the Heat Wave does connect, it is going to be enough to pick up the Fluttermane, do some decent chip to the Raging Bolt, and that light screen, like you say, it will, if the Thunderclap comes out into the Whimsicott, allow the Whimsicott to stick around for another turn because the Thunderclap will inevitably fail. But we are going to see the Terrestrialization from Luca, and it is going to be into that Chiyu, going into that ground type, Terra type Chiyu, and uh, will threaten with a Terra Blast into that Raging Bolt. But primarily, I think, first off, you need to deal, like Jamie said, with that Fluttermane. Yeah, you absolutely do. And a way you can deal with it is reduce its damage output with that light screen as well. And very smartly here from Luca, not opting for the inaccuracy of the heat wave going for the 100 accurate terror blast which is easily enough to pick up the knockout on that opposing flutter main it has the added benefit now of being immune to the electric type attacks on the raging bolt you can always threaten that with a terror blast on the next turn as well so i think very smartly done here but it's draco meteor into the opposing chiu oh! and it's a critical hit <laughs> to pick up the one hit ko on the chiu through the light screen that, that was so crucial there because the light screen means yeah. it would have easily survived. Yeah, a huge turn here of events for Ivan, picking up a massive knockout with that Draco Meteor. Like you said, Jamie, the light screen already put in place by that Whimsicott on Lucas side of the field. So really unfortunate, the critical hit, kind of taking the light screen out of the equation. And Chi Yu not known generally for its defensive capabilities. So going down so quickly to that attack. 
very big play there from Ivan, not opting for something like a thunderclap there to get rid of the whimsical, identifying that the Chi Yu was something that you need to chase down as soon as possible and getting very fortunate with a huge critical hit. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be the Maridon, of course, joining the field for Luca down to his last two Pokemon here. Uh, it's going to be Groudon joining the field for Ivan, though. Could have been an opportunity to bring in the Gothitelle and go for fake out into the Maridon and then Draco Meteor follow up. Maybe KO, probably not with the minus two in the light screen still. Uh, so the Groudon's still going to be threatening good damage here. It's going to be around our range of the Moonblast from the Whimsicott, surely. So you're now threatening the Precipice Blades, which means that surely you have to go for the Draco Meteor into the Groudon, but then at the same time, baiting that with the Protect, maybe. That would free up the Raging Bolt to go for a Draco Meteor of its own. Yeah, and the, the, the Maridon going into that Groudon Protect. So Groudon going to survive one more turn, but going to be susceptible to that Encore. The next turn, if the Whimsicott can stick around, Moonblast into that Raging Bolt, doing some very good, respectable damage, taking it just below 50% health with that return of the Curricular Hit. And a Volt Switch here from the Raging Bolt. The light screen allowing it to survive, but it does allow that Gothitelle to come onto the field now and have access to that Fake Out, which is going to be perfect timing to prevent potentially an Encore coming out from that Whimsicott. The next turn, locking out that Groudon into that protect. Yeah, of course, it wouldn't normally be able to stop the Encore, but it's at such low HP uh, because of the Covert Cloak stopping that for that flinch chance. Doesn't matter, it's going to be able to be in the range of that as well. But I, do you, I assume so. But do you have to go into the Maraidon well, with the Faker? Because uh, if you don't, uh, you're just going to take a Draco Meteor. Yeah, but then the, on the Encore can just go into the Groudon because it just went for protect. So surely you have to go for the Fake Out into the Whimsicott, right? So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, kind, of a, to, yeah, it's yeah, kind of an yeah. awkward position. Like, yeah, you need to stop the Draco, <laughs> but you can't, because then you're Encored. Then you need to stop the Encore, but then you can't, because then you're draco -ed. So, yeah, it's a really awkward position here for both of these trainers. I think you surely go for the Draco Meteor into the Groudon, but yes. just which one do you fake out? you got to accept something bad that's, that's going to that's gonna happen. Yeah, it's, it's the choices we make, but we aren't going to see the Groudon stay on the field to even entertain the possibility of being Encored. This is going to switch out for that Raging Bolt now. So this is risky as well if a Draco Meteor comes oh. into that slot. Oh, and the fake! Got wow, that's a clutch survival from the Whimsicott there. Keeping it around. There's the Draco Meteor. It went into the Gothitelle. So wow. And that's the one hit KO as well. Didn't target down the ground on there. Wow, what a fantastic turn for Luca. <laughs> Absolutely clutch survival of the Whimsicott. This is really coming down to the wire. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe the Whimsicott surviving on that imaginary focus sash yeah. there. Able to utilize at least one more Moonblast this turn. The Maridon has taken the minus two with the Draco Media, but you've got to think potentially if you are going into the ground on, it's going to be enough to pick up the ground on. And maybe a combination of that and a Moonblast into that Raging Bolt would be enough to pick up the knockout. But you've got to worry about that Thunderclap that could come out and just pick up that Whimsicott so easily. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still completely up in the air here. Like, I can't see a safe path for either of these, these trainers. Like, you, yes, you're, go you're obviously going to Drake and meet you. You have to. You're choice specs. And it is going to connect with the ground on here, so you're not going to take the Precipice Blade. We saw that the Moonblast was able to pick up the two-hit knockout if you critical here. <coughs> that means, assumedly, this Moonblast will not be able to pick up the knockout on the opposing Raging Bolt here. So, yeah, the Moonblast obviously going to be fired out. We didn't see the Whimsicott move. It wasn't going for any of its priority attacks. There is the survival of the Raging Bolt. And it's Electroweb going to be able to pick up that last little bit on the Whimsicott. It's going to drop the speed. That won't matter. Raging Bolt isn't fast enough to outspeed the Maridon at minus one it's going to have to dodge a Draco Meteor. Yeah, you feel at that point the, the Thunderclap would have been the better option just to get rid of the Whimsicott to prevent that, that yeah, Missile and Moonblast. Yeah. And here we go. There it is. Draco Meteor from the Maridon. Enough to pick up the knockout and mean that Luca Cerebelli is your winner of round eight. Moving in to day two. Out in just a couple of hits, and then yeah, the Fergaref could potentially try and and reverse the Trick Room, um, or the Iron Hands could just use it um, to to outpace some of Costa's team. Yeah, and seems like a going for full offense here for Federico, leading with the Chiyu and the Maridon, are going with the heavy hitters immediately. Costa slowing it down just a little bit here, going with the Smeagol pair with the Fergaref, so potentially trying to go for the fake out and Trick Room here. But the Maridon surely is, is strong enough to be able to KO the, KO the Frick Raft. I'm not sure if the Chi Yu would be strong enough, though. Yeah, that's a, it's a tough choice to make because, um, yeah, Maridon and Chi Yu, both of them could go for some uh, spread type attacks. Um, but, ooh, eyeing out the Terra ground yeah. here on the Frick Raft. So, yeah, you definitely want to set up Trick Room, but you want to do it in a way that either, I would say, the Smirgal and the Frigoref are healthy enough that next turn Frigoref can get something done, maybe mm -hmm. with a decorated, boosted Hyper Voice, 
or you want the Smeargle to go down this turn so you can go into your Calyrex Ice Rider. Yeah, it won't be going down this turn though because that Chiyu is going to be switching out. That means only one attack can go into the opposing Smeargle here and its Focus Ash will keep it uh, on the field for this turn. The Chiyu switched into that Ferrigraph, like we mentioned, very strong in the Calyrex Ice Rider matchup. Going to get that Electric Seed, so it's increasing its defense even further. And immediate turn one Terrestrialization coming out for that Ferrigraph, like we said. Terra Ground going to keep it very safe from the opposing Maridon. Uh, so going for Terra Ground to avoid any discharge KOs into it as well, because the Heatwave and Discharge would have got around the Follow Me here, which is coming out from the Smeggle. Yeah, so just a little bit of extra security by Costa saying that, okay, I don't really need my Terrestrialization in this matchup, I just want to get Trick Room up for sure. Mm -hmm. So, and I want to make sure that my Fergaroth doesn't take any damage at all. Um, so he's definitely valuing the Ferrigoref's HP a little bit higher than the Smirgas and also higher than keeping the option to terrestrialize around. Um, but now, as Ferrigoref has joined the battlefield for Federico, and Moody, that's an ability I haven't seen in a minute, uh, not yeah. going to be too impactful here with a, with a 1 HP, um, but yeah, Federico has that option to potentially reverse the Trick Room right away, so that's already a little bit of a mind game going on here. Yeah, it is for sure. Whether, what, how fast the Smeagol hit is here as well is going to be quite crucial. If you run it very fast, well then you can't decorate yourself Oh, and then attack. You'll have to attack, then decorate, and you won't be doing as much damage. But at the same time, Smeagol, if you run it as slow as possible, for something like Ferrigraph and Calyrex can uh, outspeed it if you just give a little bit of speed investment. We we'll, won't be able to find out this turn, though, because the Smeagol is going to be switching out. Ursaluna, a very good Pokemon to have in Trick Room. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another Pokemon that would be immune to any Electric-type attacks, but knowing that it is a choice backs Miraidon locked into Draco Meteor, Federico decides to swap it out, bring in the Iron Hands, which will benefit from the Electric Terrain, but also is one of those Pokemon on Federico's team that, as we've been saying, can play really nicely oh. on Trick Room. Oh, there's a Trick Room from Ferrigraph, but Ferrigraph on Costa's side hasn't moved yet. It's got to be reversing that Trick Room once again. Very good play coming out here from Costa, getting his Trick Room Sweeper in, in the place of the Smeagol, while still having the Trick Room. And actually got an extra turn of Trick Room exactly. on top of that. Yeah, I was just about to mention that not only is it a neutral play, it's actually a play that benefits Costa, because now, as you were saying, there's an extra turn of Trick Room, unless, of course, it's going to be reversed um, next turn, but now having the powerful Ursuluna Blood Moon on the field, I feel like a helping hand Blood Moon could be enough to knock out the Ferrigoref, and then um, it could be really dicey for Federico, as yeah, none of his Pokemon really want to go up against that Ursaluna Blood Moon. No, not at all. There it is. There's the helping hand. There's the Blood Moon coming out from Ursaluna. Wow. Absolutely a one-hit KO on this opposing Ferrigoref, and that is no more availability for a reversal of Trick Room. Yes, this Iron Hand has been left alone. It can go for a Fighting-type attack into the Ursaluna. Drain Punch is not strong enough to KO this Ursaluna, though. Oh, wow. It's got one more hit left in it, and yeah. that might be all it needs. Yeah, there's two Pokemon in the back that ha have choice items, meaning yeah. neither of them can protect. The Ursaluna is confirmed to be the slowest on the field, or at least slower than the Iron Hands. So yeah. a helping hand, it could be an Earth Power going into the Chiyu for a knockout, could be a helping hand Hyper Voice. Of course, it can't be the helping hand Blood Moon, uh, but that would have been a little bit too nice, I guess, for Acosta. Yeah, you, you need to consider the defensive terror here uh, coming out maybe from the Chi Yu, uh, but then that wouldn't matter against the opposing Hyper Voice. Would a helping hand Hyper Voice be strong enough to KO Chi Yu? It's going to be incredibly close. Yeah. Earth Power would obviously get, like, there's, there's three ground weak Pokemon left on yeah. Federico's side of the field. There has to be a defensive terror here, here, surely, to be able to try and avoid an Earth Power, but then if it's just Hyper Voice, that's just absolutely massive damage. Yeah, I think Costa could have tried to maybe protect potentially with the Ursaluna just to scout out um, for what Federico was going for. But instead, of course, you want to maximize um, your turns of Trick Room. And even if the Ursaluna Blood Moon goes down, it means that the um, Calyrex Ice Rider can join the battle, of course. So, yep. yeah. I think fine choice by Costa just going here on the offense. Yeah, and, and even if this isn't a KO on either Pokemon, everything's in Glacial Lance range at this point, and then that would be just a clean sweep for Calyrex Ice Rider. Oh, the mm. Chiyu is able to survive that Hyper Voice, though. Uh, of course, Ursaluna was on such low HP, the Life Orb is going to take itself out, freeing up this Drain Punch and an attack from the Chiyu into the opposing Ferrigraph. That's some very wow. good damage with a critical yeah. hit into that Ferrigraph. It's in range of any attack that the Chiyu would want to go for here. Uh -huh. It doesn't really matter what it locks into, that Ferrigraph would be KO'd, but it is the overheat. Of course, that would easily KO the Frigraph. It might have done it without the Drain Punch help as well, but then now you're stuck with a minus two Chiyu on the yeah. field. Yeah, the Drain Punch, definitely helpful for the Iron Hands to get a little bit more HP back. 
But I think now we will see Smurgle and Calyrex Ice Rider join the battle at the same time, and this is exactly mm -hmm. what Costa needed, because now the Chiyu, while it terrestrialized, it, it, no matter what typing it is, it would go down to the Glacial Lands at this point. You can't yep. switch in the Miraidon, so it seems pretty safe to just go for the Fake Out into the Iron Hands and the Glacial Lands, and looks like Costa in this game one uh, has put himself into a position to win this game. Yeah, and that, like, I think that the reversal of the Trick Room, buying the extra turn, this would have been the last turn of Trick Room here, and then that could have opened up the potential of, well, here's Miraidon, now yep. I can go for Discharge, and maybe that's going to be able to paralyze your Calyrex, and then if you do get paralyzed, that's a KO. But there's an extra turn of Trick Room. This could be easily be fake out into the Iron Hands. Glacial Lance is KOing whatever that is in the GU slot, whether that switched out. It stayed in, it's being KO'd. And now this should put the Iron Hands in range of that Glacial Lance. If, even if it wasn't enough to do half damage to the remaining HP of the Iron Hands, that was a KO on the GU. That's, yep. that's going to be a chilling nay boost, yep. getting your attack a, attack boost. The Maraidon can't defensively terror here anymore. It's choice specs, it can't protect. This is just a Glacial Lance and a, a game one for Costa. Yeah, showing how powerful this combination is of the Smeargle and the um, and the Calyrex, because yeah, with a fake out and the follow me, you have a perfect support kit here on the Smirgle. It doesn't really matter what the Moody boost does in this uh, situation. Of course, um, you might also have some nightmares still about mm -hmm. uh, that yep. ability back in the day, but uh, it was changed since then. It's not that as much of a thing anymore. But no matter what um, the Smirgle is doing this turn, uh, the Glacial Lands from Calyrex on the last turn of Trick Room will be enough to get both knockouts here. And um, yeah, with that, Costa is up 1 0 against Federico Camparelli. Yeah, fantastic game one for Costa here. Going to be one game away from making it into the, uh, the Whimsicott. Oh, it has protect. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, Whim, the Whimsicott has light screen instead of what would normally be the protect slot here. So, yeah, uh, it's going to be the same league coming out from Costa. The Smeagol and Frograf worked pretty well in that first game. Uh, but instead of the Chiyu, it's going to be the Frograf immediately threatening down a whip head with that Maraidon. Yeah, so, but now we will have this Trick Room Mind game <laughs> from the very first mm -hmm. turn. Because, of course, Costa could just go ahead, go once again for the follow me and trick room. But then, yeah, Frigoref on Federico's side could just do the same thing. So is Costa just going for an attack, hoping that Federico will set up the trick room for him? Uh, that, that would also be very risky. So already here in turn one, a very crucial decision. Yeah, it is for sure. You can absolutely decorate the Frigoraf. That's probably the best thing that the Smeagol can do. You, can go for a, uh, you can't go for a fake out into the Maraidon because the Frigoraf yep. is on the field. You can't spore because the electric terrain's on the field. Follow me would be pretty reasonable as well, but then you're into the mind game of does my opponent set Trick Room or not? Yeah. Uh, and you can just go for the decorate into your Frigoraf immediately. It depends on the speeds of whether the Smeagol is super slow and the Frigoraf is reasonably slow. Uh, but yeah, just going, just going wow. on the offense here. Uh, Volt Switch bringing that Smeagol immediately down to the Focus Sash. Wow, it looks like Costa is outplaying Federico at least this turn he did not go for the for the Terra ground on the Farooq mm -hmm. because yeah. yeah in the first game he showed him hey I'm ready to commit my Terra just to get up the trick room so now Federico is like oh, I, I can't really afford to yeah use my my powerful attack into um, into the potential Terra ground but mm -hmm. no now Costa is saving it for later gets off the decorate and that will boost Farooq's at a uh, special attack stage uh, quite a bit powerful hyper voice coming out now yeah powerful hyper voice oh, and wow. there it was there oh. was the attempt at the reverse of trick room Ooh. but no setting it for Costa now the Thrigraph has been decorated. You saw how much the Hyper Voice did. That's going to be able to pick up the knockout on the Urshfu. Yep. And then after another decorate, could be in range of the KO for the Thrigraph as well. Yeah, and you can't go for a Sucker Punch, of course, because of the Armor Tail. Mm -hmm. So that means... Uh, I don't see much of a reason for, for Costa to switch anything up. He can just go for another Decorate, and Decorate, in a way, also acts like a follow me, yep. because you have to deal with the Smirgle at some point. Yeah, you no, and it's over! Wow! That's a forfeit! Wow. Immediately! Wow, a turn one, a turn two forfeit coming out from Federico. Costa Dynamos oh. is going to advance to day two! Oh my god. What a 